We are on the record uh, calling State versus Brooks, 21 CF 1848. I have the state appearing by District Attorney Sue Opper, Deputy District Attorney Leslie Basie, Assistant District Attorney Zach Wichow, and I have the defendant, Daryl Brooks, appearing in person. Um, I have the jurors coming in a little bit later today, so I'm not, but they usually come early, uh, so I'm not sure if they're here, but I did want to make sure and ask if there's anything the parties wished me to address this morning. I don't believe there's been any new filings. I haven't seen any, but I did want to ask. Um, we would just like to make a record with regard to the concern uh, Mr. Brooks had yesterday about the juror that he believed he recognized um, from his initial appearance that may have made some type of hand gesture to him. Um, I did not, unfortunately, write down the juror number. Um, I, I know what the juror looks like, but I couldn't associate it on my chart. Do you recall the juror number? I'd be guessing. I think I know what it is, but okay. I don't want to be sure. correct on that. But we can um, have the civilian bailiff provide us with that information. I don't know if we want to do um, have that juror come out just to confirm. I know that the juror told the civilian bailiff who informed the court. Um, our concern is we certainly don't want Mr. Brooks to keep raising issues with regard to specific jurors, and um, you know we start using using those alternates up. So I guess I'd prefer to be on the record that that juror was not at the initial appearance. Um, I know that I, the three of us were at the initial appearance. There was a an older woman who did, um, I ended up talking to her during the proceeding. She was not the juror that um, was described yesterday or that I saw yesterday with the clothes that Mr. Brooks indicated she was wearing. Um, so I just really would like that to be put on the record that that juror, in fact, was not at the initial appearance and have her come in, provide her name, and uh, do that. Or the juror number, not her name, her so, juror. So my line. understanding is that following what Mr. Brooks described happening at the initial appearance, there was a woman that one of the deputies spoke with and warned her uh, it's my understanding that woman may have been in the gallery on Monday and was warned about behavior then. I have issued an order. She is not allowed back in these proceedings because of that. I believe we know her identity, and I can tell you with certainty it is not our juror. So, um, and if there's anything else, any other requests, um, I don't think it's necessary to bring that juror out given that record. But I will certainly do that if the state feels, or Mr. Brooks, that that's important for their understanding or confirmation at this point. Yeah, and I think what would be important to note, to note if her pool number is the first 41, Mr. Brooks actually was in court on day one of jury selection, I know for a fact. Um, I'm in looking at my notes, I'm not, it's unclear to me if he was present at any time in day two of jury selection. I know he was in day one. Um, so his claim that he was unable to see the juror um, at the time, obviously if it's a juror from day one, he was able to see her because she, he was in court with her. Um, so that would also be something, I guess if we could establish that she was part of the first 41, then I think the record is clear that the defendant was in court when the first 41 were brought out, and therefore he could have objected at that time. Um, I will get confirmation of the number um, and uh, we'll go from there as Thank well. You. Any requests as it relates to that, Mr. Brooks? Um, I would, before I get to that whole issue, Your Honor, if I may, I would like to uh, state for the record and would like the record to reflect that um, I personally don't identify by that name. I am here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as an authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. Your statements are noted for the record, sir. All right, Thank as to the honor. issue of the juror. Um, it's 
far as the issue of the juror, um, I was maybe briefly present when the first wave of jurors were brought in. I, I didn't recall really being in here long enough to really get a look at the jurors coming in because I was removed at that time. Actually, either they were coming in or shortly after they were brought in, I was removed. I definitely was not present for the second and third wave. I was in the other courtroom, so it would be, I can't see the jurors from the other courtroom on the monitor. So it wouldn't possibly be that I would have seen the juror that I was referring to yesterday. Understanding that that may very well be true. My recollection is you were removed pretty quickly uh, due to an interruption early on. I don't have my notes in front of me as to when you were brought in or not. Um, but I am advising you that I was able to confirm with others, including law enforcement, that um, the juror that you suspected was the woman who made an inappropriate gesture, gesture toward you at the initial appearance. They are not the same individuals. I've been able to confirm that. I know the identity of the woman who did what you said, and it is not this juror. Um, is there any way that I can be sure of that? Do you want to have juror, I think it might be 41, I don't want to guess, <laughs> um, but do you, I can bring that juror out when the jurors get here and we can have her under oath testify uh, that she was not at your initial appearance or any of the proceedings in this case. Uh, that would, I'm, I'm able to do that. That would be helpful, Your Honor. All right, can we check to see where they're at and if they're here? And if so, to have that juror brought out. It's probably best we have a record of that juror number with specificity in any event. Your Honor, the, the only concern I would have, obviously, we may know that there's one um, person at initial appearance who may have made a hand gesture. I just wanted on the record that if there was a second person, it's not the juror that's impaneled in this case. I'm not aware of another. Nor, nor am I. I'm not interrupting Emma. Um, Give me one second. Uh, the juror will be out momentarily. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Um, I would like to uh, state for the record, um, the prosecution seems to be saying this with first-hand knowledge. Um, Referring to the issue we're talking about right now? Correct, Your Honor. Is there a question with that, or I'm not understanding why you're raising that at this moment? Well, I'm raising it because the, it, um, the prosecution said that, and they stated for that they knew for a fact that this juror is not the juror that I'm speaking of. I said that. Well, the prosecution said it too, John. I provided the information, said I've been able to confirm the identity of the person who made an inappropriate gesture uh, to you at your initial appearance. And then based upon the informal questioning of the juror that you suspected was that, determined there, uh, confirmed that she was not that individual, and then subsequent to confirming that informal with that informal information, um, I, I was able to do some additional questioning of law enforcement and others to determine the identity of that other person and confirm, in fact, that what you said happened. But it's not this juror, but we're gonna bring that juror out just so you can, or I will, question her about that. So there's a very clear record that your concern uh, and whether 
one of the jurors on this panel was at your initial appearance and made an inappropriate gesture can be um, put to bed once and for all so that you're satisfied they are two different people, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Do you want to take over? No, no, yes, she's a, just can sit in the jury box. She's a juror. She's not a, she may be put under oath and questioned, but she's a juror, and so no one can film her or take her photograph. Go ahead, she can just sit in uh, one of the spots in the jury box. Good morning, you can have a seat. Um, I just want to put on the record, this is juror number 41, and um, you are not in trouble. We just have had an issue come up and we wanted to make sure we all had accurate information. At any point in time, did you attend <coughs> any of the proceedings in this matter uh, re regarding Mr. Brooks? No. Were you ever at the initial appearance for Mr. Brooks? No. All right. State have any follow-up based on that? No, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, any follow-up based on what I've asked this witness, or what I've asked this juror, sorry? No. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna wait till uh, she's back out of the courtroom because there's a hallway behind me, and then ask a follow-up. Mr. Brooks, uh, we brought out juror number 41. Was that the same juror that you initially suspected was someone who was at your initial appearance? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And again, she denied. She said she told us she wasn't there. And I trust that satisfies your inquiry into this issue. Um, I'm still a little leery, but... I, okay. I, I, say, I say that. I'm not interrupting them. I, Go ahead. I, I, I say that because I, do, I don't forget faces. I don't. All right. I understand what you're saying, but the record uh, is made clear, and I'll make a finding that juror number 41 was not at your initial appearance um, and is not the person who made an inappropriate gesture to you uh, either at or following that hearing. All right. Then any other issues from the state? Yes, Judge, uh, just briefly, a few. Um, from yesterday's testimony, we'd like to move into evidence Exhibit 1, which was the map. Exhibit 3, which was the video played uh, during Corey, Corey Runkle's testimony. And Exhibit 5, which is the photograph of Erica Patterson. They were all testified to uh, yesterday. Any objection, Mr. Brooks? Um, yes, Your Honor. Um... I guess it would be uh, to the terms of relevancy. Um, there's been um, no testimony from Miss um, Patterson, so I'm just curious to know the relevancy of that being made evidence at this point in time. Because from what was said yesterday was that she would be testifying at some point. Would it not be? Better to have that admitted then if she decides to testify instead of right now when we're not even sure if she is going to testify. Um, your objections are noted for the record. There was a proper foundation uh, laid regarding each one of these exhibits. They also are relevant to the issues within this trial and I'll admit um, exhibits one, three, and five and also advise the jury when they come back into court this morning. Your Honor, I'm not interrupting, am I? Um, hold on, I'm not um, to you yet if there are any issues, any other issues from the state. Yes, Your Honor, I would just like the record to indicate that I understand we, we did not follow up uh, with this after the lunch break on the record, but it was my understanding that Mr. Brooks did receive the medical attention that he was seeking over the lunch hour. So I just wanted that on the record. And then uh, finally, Your Honor, um, just a reminder to Mr. Brooks as to the other acts evidence uh, in line with his questioning of Corey Runkle yesterday. Uh, Erica Patterson will be testifying here this morning. The court uh, ruled, issued a ruling as to the other acts evidence. The state strictly abided by that. Mr. Brooks 
came very close several times to opening the door to that testimony. We treaded very lightly on purpose to be respectful of the court's ruling, but the court warned him twice. Mr. Wichow even personally went over and warned Mr. Brooks during Ms. Runkle's testimony. And um, before we start another round of uh, challenges, potentially during Ms. Patterson's testimony, we just wanted to make a record of that so that Mr. Brooks knows if he opens the door to that other act's testimony, it will come in. And I appreciate the state raising that as well. Um, Mr. Brooks, on the issue of medical attention, did you see the jail nurse or other medical personnel during the lunch hour yesterday? Uh, yes, I did. I received a, a, a cleaning of my cut and a bandage. All right, thank and, you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was getting to the other parts of the injury state. Um, Go ahead. Viewed the bruises that I have on my arm and legs as well. I don't know what's going to happen behind that, but I was looked at. All right, thank you. It does not appear to me that any of these injuries are interfering in any way with your ability to um, be here today and assist in your own defense. So that's good. Yeah, that's, I'm just a little tender, just a little sore, so. All right, uh, Mr. Brooks, do you understand uh, what the state is referencing as it relates to the other acts evidence? I do not understand. Uh, do you recall being in court at the end of August when the court addressed a number of motions, including a motion brought by the state to admit other acts? Um, and with all respect, Your Honor, this is this whole process is, is very, very new to me. So I'm, I'm trying to, um, I guess, stay within bounds of the questions that I'm allowed to ask. If I color outside the line, so to speak, it is not intentionally, because I'm, I'm basically learning as I go. So I'm going to have my clerk print out the motion for other acts that was filed by the state along with the response that was filed by your attorneys at that time and further advise you the court uh, did not grant the state's request to admit other acts as it relates to your conduct with Erica Patterson prior to November 21 of 2021. And your questions yesterday of Ms. Runkle um, could have opened the door to the court revisiting that issue. That's why the court stopped. It was interesting, Ms. Runkle clearly was advised not to answer, not to talk about other acts. The state followed the um, requirement that they advise their witnesses about the court's order as it relates to other acts. Um, and I believe I, kind of paused twice and said, are you sure you want to answer that? Uh, I referenced generally some prior rulings so as not to alert the jury to anything more than that. And then at one point, Attorney Wichow um, also came over, muted your microphone. I don't know what was said, uh, but my understanding is he basically kind of gave you the same caution. There's a ruling, something to that effect. And I know you didn't proceed with the questions that you were had originally uh, attempted to ask this witness. So it's very clear what we're talking about. Again, I'm gonna give you these filings so that you understand what I prohibited uh, in this trial. And the record to reflect those uh, filings are being provided. Madam Clerk, do you happen to have the uh, document numbers for those? Um, Sorry, I should. Document 170. One sixty one. So documents one seventy one sixty one were provided to Mr. Brooks. So the other, the only other thing I'll say on that, sir, is if you ask questions, um, 
I'm not going, that would open up the door potentially, or at least ask questions that call for answers that might fall within that order that I issued. You do that at your own peril and you may open the door to the state bringing in other witnesses and other testimony about those issues. So I want you to be advised of that. You are correct that when the state uh, made the request, I prohibited the state from introducing that evidence. So you're not incorrect when you say I didn't, if you, uh, when you kind of referenced about that was, there's a difference between me prohibiting you and prohibiting the state. But from my perspective, the order that I issued was to your benefit. And so you can ask those questions. You're not prohibited, but then you potentially open the door to that information becoming uh, admissible in this case. So I want you to be advised of that. May, may I? Quick, Your Honor. Go ahead. Uh, I'd just like to say that um, I accept for value and return for value these filings. Um, I do believe that um, I have a little bit more clarity if, if that helps. Sure. Thank you for putting that on the record. Do you have any other issues you want me to address? Uh, just very, very quick. Um, I, I still don't understand the nature and cause of the charges against me, Your Honor. And I still would motion for or tennis motion for the jurisdiction to be proven, the subject matter jurisdiction. And also a motion for finding a fact. Your requests are all noted for the record and for the reasons previously stated on this record, I'm not going to uh, answer those requests any further. They've already been denied by the court. I point you to uh, the case of, I can have my post-it note back. The Benaby decision at 654 F3rd 753. All right, anything else, sir? Um, I'm not interrupting, am I? No, I'm asking you a question. Um, just for the record, Your Honor, I would like the record to reflect, um, is that a judicial determination that you are making? Your Honor, the, your, Mr. Brooks, the record speaks for itself. I've made my decision. We're moving on. All right. With that, then, state have uh, a witness available to be called. We do. Would you also just make a record, Your Honor, this morning that Mr. Brooks does appear again in his orange jail uniform and that he was offered the ability to wear street clothes and <clears throat> declined that offer? Also, he does have, appear, appears to have all of his discovery materials at the table with him. Yes, thank you. I should make a record of that as well. Um, I didn't state at the outset Mr. Brooks is here in person and in custody. He once again has come to the courtroom in jail attire. Um, I presume Mr. Brooks, but please confirm for me you were offered the opportunity to uh, change into street clothes. Um, as I stated on the record yesterday, um, I'm waiting for the results of the COVID test that I took. So until I get those results back, I would prefer to not wear street clothes at this time. All right. Can you confirm for me, though, that you were provided an opportunity to change into them if you so chose? And not to my knowledge. Sir, I'm providing you with that opportunity right now. If you would like to change into your street clothes, into the suit and tie that you had previously, or any other street clothes, I would give you that opportunity. Did you hear me advise you of that just now? Uh, I, I might consider it. Maybe I may have more information from the medical staff once we take a break, or maybe at, I'm anticipating. Well, actually, I anticipated that I would know before we even started court so that, that do you want me to have the bailiffs uh, ask the CO if there's any new information that can be relayed to you before we bring the jury out um, that would be helpful your honor 
Do you have any objection? Um, I could email the jail administrator if you want, or I can just simply have the bailiffs do that. Uh, whichever works best for your honor. All right, let's see. She's not going to give me information in an email that much, I know, but I could at least find out if there's new information. If there's new information, then it's going to have to be given to you directly. That may require you to be taken into the holding cell uh, to be given that information, okay? Uh, I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, let me just continue that. Um, again, right now he's in the jail attire. We're going to give him an opportunity to see if there's any update regarding uh, the testing that was done earlier this week. Um, and until we at least get word whether there is new information or not, we'll um, not bring the jury out. I will make a record that Mr. Brooks does have the three boxes that have been referenced previously. Um, I see the objection sign. I see the uh, selected statutes that the court provided to him previously. And I see um, he has a number of papers in front of him. So he looks as if he's prepared uh, to participate meaningfully today. Can I say something real quick for the record, Your Honor? Sure. I, I did bring these boxes up. I have not had the time to go through everything in there. As you can see, it's a lot. That And that's putting it minimal. A lot. So I, I have not had the time to go through everything that's in there. I'm, I'm, I'm winging it, Your Honor. Deputy Wittig, any uh, new information? Yeah. All right. Well, can you provide that? Well, let me just see. We'll just do it with the court staff. All right. All right. The information that I have on whether there's new information is um, they don't have the results, but um, medical will be called again to check on that to see if uh, anything um, new. Any new information is available, but as of right now, there's not. Um, I, off, I also was advised that you were offered three times to have street closed by Officer Gabor. Just want to make a record of that. All right, then, Mr. Brooks, we don't have apparently new information. I intend to just continue then, okay? Uh, really quick. Really quick. Um. To the uh, decision of your honor to for me to be uh, removed um, from from the proceedings the la over the last few days, um, that was used from the Illinois versus Allen, right? Correct. Um, I also had cited to a case that I believe. Uh, is on point, although not binding on this court. It's has per, I am persuaded by the reasoning in um, United States versus Jennings, found at 855 F SUP 1427, um, which is from 1994 uh, from Pennsylvania. And as well as, sorry, just that one. That was affirmed by the Third Circuit in United States v. Jennings, 61 F. 3rd, 867, Third Circuit, 1995. <coughs> so the first uh, decision I referenced was a district, federal district court decision, and then the Third Circuit decision. Let me know if you need those citations again. Um, does any one of those uh, mention uh, the being present through uh, audio and visual? Yes, audio. In other uh, words, the would that be defendant good? in that case, who also was a pro se defendant, was removed from the courtroom after he said he would continue disruptive conduct in the presence of prospective jurors. 
but he was able to continue to listen to proceedings through loudspeakers and transmit messages to the court, was barred, and what the court held is he was barred from the proceedings by his own conduct, not by the court, and the conviction in that case was affirmed. Um, Do you want that citation again? Uh, no, it, I'm not interrupting, am I? No, go ahead. Um, I do represent myself pro per. I would like that for stated for the record, like the record to reflect that, not pro se. Um, the record will so reflect your choice of term to describe your appearance today. Um, I've briefly read uh, Illinois versus Allen. It it didn't say uh, it didn't give any reference at all to him being present by uh, audio or visual in, in that case whatsoever. It just it just strictly talks about um, the reasons that he was removed and the options that the judge had in that. Um, one of them being that um, he, he could be uh, bound and gagged um, one of them being that he can be held in contempt and removed from the courtroom while the trial would continue, but it did not say uh, anything about being present uh, visually or audio or by audio. Well, I appreciate you reading the case, sir, and providing that information. I'm well aware of what the case says, and as that case says, the uh, Supreme Court talked about there would be no one formula for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere, uh, and no one formula will be best in all situations. But the Supreme Court said this, we think there are at least three constitutionally permissible ways for a trial judge to handle an obstreperous defendant like Allen, going through the three things that you uh, identify. And uh, my findings here are that there's a fourth way and that's through the wonders of technology that weren't available in 1970 when that uh, decision was authored. So I appreciate the notation on the record. Uh, you are here today, and I hope you stay here today. That's certainly my preference. Um, you've demonstrated um, you're able to prepare, you're able to ask questions, you're able to articulate in a clear, coherent, cogent, and responsive way. Um, and I'd like to bring the jury out, and that's what we're going to do next. I'm not interrupting real quick. I just want to say something very quick to that. Very quick, sir. Um, I, I don't see that fourth way, Your Honor. Also, when Mr. they talk... Mr. Brooks, my decision stands from previous. If you believe there's any error that I made, that is for you to address if there is a conviction and on appeal. But my decision stands, May I and, my, and the record speaks for itself. May I put on record that I intend to appeal that judicial you decision, Your Honor? Understood. You may appeal as you deem appropriate. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's bring the jury out. I will ask everyone stand uh, for the jury um, out of respect for them. Lady Laura, I don't know. Oh, poor guy. So I'm going to send you this email. I just need the cases printed off. I don't want to interrupt uh, with printing here. Or do you want to send it to the? I'm not going to send it. I that I'd have to search for it. So. Oh, that's great. Or why don't you do mail to me? Sounds good.
but that's a great idea next next door and then we can we can have Andy go and grab it can you include the email Be seated when you come in. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Welcome back. Have a seat, and I'll make sure you all, looks like you all have your writing materials uh, to take notes if you so choose. For the record, um, I have received exhibits one, three, and five. With that, the state may call its next witness. Thank you. The state calls Erica Patterson. Good morning, Ms. Patterson. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is up a riser and to my right. When you get there, please raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's standing over here, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. Have a seat. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Okay. Erica Patterson, E-R-I-K-A-P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O-N. Right. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Patterson. How are you doing today? I'm, think, I'm fine, thank you. Sorry. All right. Um, can you tell us, do you know a man by the name of Daryl Brooks? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd ask that the court uh, have Mr. Brooks temporarily remove his mask. Mr. Brooks, you're advised to remove your mask, please. Thank you. Ms. Patterson, do you see Daryl Brooks in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Can you tell us where he's sitting and what he's wearing? On the left side, and he's wearing an orange shirt and a mask. And as the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant? The record will reflect that this witness has identified the defendant. Can you tell us how long you've known Daryl Brooks? Um, since I was 15. How old are you now? 32 today. Oh, happy oh, birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, what's the nature of your relationship with Mr. Brooks? We have a 15-year-old daughter together. In what state did you meet Mr. Brooks? Reno, Nevada. And when did you come to Wisconsin? Um, last year, 2021, June 13th. Why did you come to Wisconsin? Um, we were coming out here. I was going to be out here for two weeks and go back, but I never went back. Who did you come to Wisconsin with? Daryl Brooks. Where did you live when you got to Wisconsin? Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, we lived with his mother, sorry. Mr. Brooks' mother? Mm -hmm. In what city was that? Hold on. Was that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's what my job is to make sure they're working. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. At some point, did you uh, stop living in Milwaukee and start living in Waukesha? Yes, I did. Do you remember approximately when that timeline was? November 2nd, 2021. Okay. Where were you staying in Waukesha? The women's shelter in Waukesha. That's downtown? Yes. Do you know a person by the name of Corey Runkle? Yes. Where did you meet Corey Runkle? The Women's Shelter. Were you roommates? Yes. Okay. I want to direct your attention to the date of November 21st, 2021. Uh, yes. Did you know anything about a parade happening in Waukesha that day when you woke up that morning? I didn't know about the parade. Okay, what about that afternoon? Did it become apparent to you that something yes. was going on? Yes, yes. Did you come into contact with Daryl Brooks on the afternoon of November 21st, 2021? Yes. Where did you first come into contact with Mr. Brooks? At Frame Park. And uh, 
how did that come about? What were you doing and why did he get there? We were messaging and calling each other all day. We were arguing back and forth. He came out there. Well, I told him I was with Miss Corey. Um, and he came out there. I told him where I was. Got in his car. We drove around. And then I forgot the street. We went up that street. It's a hill. It's kind of by the Walgreens. Um, we went up that hill. We drove around. Me and him got into an altercation. He hit me in my eye. I jumped out of the car. Walked and found my way back by Flame Park. Um, and then he followed me there. And then I went back in his car and I got out. And I had called Corey. Well, I called Corey before that. And she came to meet me. I told her that me and him got into an altercation. So she met up with me. And by the time she got there, um, she pulled me out the way because his car turned around. He swerved. She pulled me out of the way. He got out of his car. And they got into an altercation. He pushed her in her face. And I don't remember if she hit him back or anything that, that, that we walked away and walked back to the women's shelter. Okay. Let's go back and, and go through some of the details of that, all right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you said that you told Mr. Brooks that you were hanging out with Miss Corey. Yes. Were you hanging out with Corey Runkel earlier that day? Yes, her and her friend Nick. Okay. Nick. Yes. Do you remember where you were with those two? It was at the frame park because we had split up when I met up with Daryl. Do you remember what you were doing in Frame Park with Corey? We were just hanging out. Okay. Any alcohol involved? Yeah, a little bit. Do you I remember? Had like a Mike's hard, a um, little Mike's hard beer. Okay. Yeah. Would you say that you were intoxicated after consuming one Mike's hard beer? No, I was not. Okay. And uh, at what point did you split up with Corey? Um, when Daryl was on his way, Corey and Nick had left, so I sat there and waited for him. We were still arguing on the phone, but I waited for him. And you were in Frame Park? Yes. Okay. How did Daryl arrive? That is, he didn't, he didn't walk to Waukesha. He drove okay. in his mother's car. It was the red, was it a Ford, I believe? I'm not sure what kind of car, but it was the red. Had you seen him driving that car on previous occasions? Yes. Um, had you ever been in that vehicle before? Yes. When you were staying with Mr. Brooks' mother, were you staying in the house? No. Where were you staying? We were outside. Sometimes we'd sleep in the, that car because his mom, he, he was not allowed to, you know, be in the house. So, yes. And you slept in that car with yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. That was before November of 2021? Yes. Okay. Um, describe for us what happened when Mr. Brooks first arrived in Frame Park, when you first saw him that day. We were still arguing. Pretty much, he was already in a bad mood when he met up with me anyways. This is an argument that face-to-face -face using words, not messaging, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Did you get in the vehicle? Yes. Okay. And what happened next? We drove around and we're arguing and that's when we got into the altercation in the car and that's when I jumped out. We were up the hill. Do you remember exactly the route that the two of you took while you were driving around? Objection. Rather than see. Over rule. She may answer. Yes, I do. I'm not sure the exact street names. Like I said, I'm not from Waukesha, but I do know the route. After, um, excuse me, the next day you met with Detective Steve Guth, is that right? Yes, it was the same day. Okay, and you, uh, you got in the squad car with Detective Guth? Oh, that was the next day, yes. Sorry. And showed him the route that you took with Mr. I Brooks? Yes, I did. Okay, all right. Um, you described going up a hill. Right? Yes. Did you cross the river before you did that? No. Okay. What happened once you got up at the top of the hill? He drove up farther more, and then that's when I jumped. It was on the up the hill, it was farther more, and then that's when we, he hit me and I um, jumped out of his car. Well, his mother's car. Where were you sitting when he hit you? The passenger side front seat. Where was he sitting? Driver's side. What did he use to hit you? His hand. Was it an open? Hand, a closed fist? Yes. What was it? Like this, sorry, like his open hand. Okay. But it was hard. So it, the records should reflect that the witness raised her right hand and yes. kind of waved it almost like a back slap? No, harder than that. Okay. What did you do after Mr. Brooks struck you? I cried and then I just jumped out of the car. And then going towards down the hill, that's when he was following me. Describe how you were going down the hill. Walking down the hill. And how was he going down the hill? Driving. 
the red Ford Escape? Yes. Okay. What happened next? He just followed me all the way to the park. Okay. He tried to take my phone from me at the light going down the hill, and he just kept following me and arguing with me out the window. Do you recall being uh, near a gas station while this argument was happening? Yes. Objection irrelevant. Yes. Over, hold on. Overruled, she may answer, and the answer she provided may stand. Yes. It was right at the light. The gas station on the, oh, that's the gas station on the left, and then Walgreens is towards the right. And uh, do you remember what was being said <coughs> at the gas station? I do not remember. Okay. Um, what happened when you got past the gas station? I kept walking. He was still following me. Did you at any point attempt to contact anybody for help? No, just Corey, about, but towards, towards the, um, the frame park. That's when I called her, when okay. I got closer to there. Did she answer? Yes. What did you say? I said, he just hit me, and I said, I need you to meet me, and that's when she met me. Where did you go? I walked past Frame Park, and I went, um, I met Corey, and well, I got into his car and then got back out, and I met Corey at White Rock School, I believe it is. When you say his car, you're, you're talking about who? Daryl Brooks. And uh, were you familiar with White Rock School at the time? Did you, you ever? No been there before? No. You just know that from That's talking about this afterwards? Yes, yes. Okay. What happened when you got to White Rock School? <laughs> That's when I had, because I had got there, got back in his car, talked to him, got back out, Corey had met, she snatched me out of the, um, out of the way because he swerved his car when he made a U-turn and then that's when he got out of the car and they were arguing and he hit her in her face and then I think she pushed him back, I don't recall, and then I was trying to split them up at the time after that we just kept walking and went to the women's shelter. Who's we? Me and Miss Corey. Uh, Madam Clerk, could we please have the state's rear table projected for the witness? Uh, projected on the screen in front of you, a video marked as State's Exhibit Number Four. Do you see the screen? Yes. Have you seen this video before? Yes. Um, what does it depict, or what, what's in this video? What are we going to see here? You're going to see me walking, and you're going to see him um, turning the car back around and Corey meeting up with me in the altercation they had. Does this video accurately show what happened in front of the White Rock School on November 21st of 2021? Yes. I move Exhibit 4 into evidence and request permission to publish. Any objection? Yes, uh, we haven't even played the video. How do we know what's even in the video at this point? Can we see the video before it is admitted into evidence? Your objection is noted. The foundation has been laid. Exhibit 4 is received. And permission to publish is granted. Shut off the poly. I think it's the polycom system that's oh, taking yeah, up the screen. Yep. Timestamp of fifty one seconds in this exhibit. Actually, can we pause quick? Paused at 1.04, and just to clarify, Ms. Patterson, we're gonna watch portions of the video, we're not gonna talk while it's playing, and then when it's paused, I'll ask you questions, okay? Okay. All right, Resume at 1.04.
let's pause. We've paused at one minute and 37 seconds. Ms. Patterson, uh, who did we see in the video there walking? Me. Okay. And we saw a red SUV, right? Yes. Who was driving that SUV? Daryl Brooks. Was there anybody else in the vehicle at that point, to your knowledge? No. Okay. Let's resume playing. Pause there. At four minutes and 17 seconds, the two people who just entered the screen from the right, do you know who they are? Corey and Nick. Do you know which is which? Corey's on the left, Nick's on the right. Let's resume playing. six minutes and three seconds. Now, Ms. Patterson, we, we watched the video, but you were there. Can you tell us what was happening during that portion of the video we just watched? Corey and Mr. Brooks were arguing, and that's when he pushed her in her face, and she, I don't recall what she did back, and then that's when he drove off. One of them, I think it was Nick, called the police, um, and that's when he drove off. Do you remember what Nick said when he called the police? I believe Nick said he had a knife if I recall, um, but he didn't have one, but I, that's what Nick said on the phone. When you say he, who are you talking about? Daryl Brooks. Okay. And you didn't see Mr. Brooks with a knife that day? No. What about Nick? Did you see him with a knife? No. Did you have a knife? No. Corey? No. Why do you think Nick said to the police that there was a knife? Probably to make them come faster. Okay. Um, who got into the driver's seat at the end of that video? Daryl Brooks. And again, anybody in the vehicle at that point? No. Other than him? No. Let's resume playing from 6.03.
can stop it there at 6 minutes and 54 seconds. Uh, what did we see in that clip, Ms. Patterson? I walked away from Corey and Nick because I was mad because me and her started arguing after that because she was mad that I even met up with Mr. Brooks. Okay. And then she was running after me. Do you know the direction that you were walking there? Um, straight. And then... <laughs> That's fair. Walk is confusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> it really is. I'm sorry. Uh, towards downtown or away from? Towards downtown. Okay. Sorry. And where did you go after you walked off the screen here? I just kept walking until they followed me, and then we made a left. I'm not sure which street it was, but we made a left. Did we you? didn't know yet. We just made a left turn and went straight towards the women's shelter. Before you turned off of the street you're walking on here, did you have contact with the police officer? Yes, we did. And you, you spoke briefly with that officer? Yes. And then where'd you go after you spoke with that officer? Then we left. That's when we made the left across the street and um, went towards the shelter, women's shelter. At the moment when Mr. Brooks um, left the, the little physical scuffle that we saw there and got into the driver's seat, how would you describe his demeanor? He was angry. Okay. How do you know that? What was he saying or doing that led you to believe that? Besides the fact that he was arguing the whole time and he hit me, he was just mad. He just left very angry. He just drove off fast. He was mad they called the cops. Okay. Uh, you don't recall any specific things that he said at that point? No. Do you recall what kind of shoes he was wearing? I do not. Do you remember uh, meeting with detectives after this and saying that he was wearing blue slides? I don't recall that, okay. but I'm sure I did. Can we uh, please pull up for the witness only? Exhibit five. Objection, why is that for the witness? Oh, sorry. You recognize this photograph? Yes, yes. And I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump ahead there. I'm assuming that Mr. Brooks withdrew that objection. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was my understanding, and appreciate that. Okay, go ahead. And I believe, actually, Exhibit 5 has already been exhibit, uh, received and published, so I'd ask to do that again, to publish again. Permission granted. Uh, Jack, what is it supposed to be for the witness only? The exhibit's previously been received and the state requested permission to publish it once again and it was I granted that request. So when, just so I'm clear, when it's uh, published again, then it's... Correct. Um, when, it's, when I say permission to publish granted, that means it will be shown to the courtroom and to the jury. Okay, I, I didn't understand. That's okay. Ms. Patterson, who's that in the, in the picture? That's me. And that photograph was taken the day of the parade. November 21st? Yes. The night? Yes. Okay. And what injuries uh, do we see in that video, in that photograph? That is my um, left eye that was swollen. Your left eye would have been the eye closest to the defendant uh, yeah. based on your description of where you and the defendant were sitting in the vehicle? Yes. And how did you sustain that injury? From him, Mr. Brooks, when he hit me. Uh, Ms. Patterson, did you consent in any way to being struck in the face? No. That's all I have for this witness. All right, thank you, Mr. Brooks. Do you have any questions for this witness? Uh, yes, I do. First of all, good morning. Good morning. And happy birthday. Thank you. Um, you stated that you were um, hanging out with your friend, Miss Corey, on the day of this incident, correct? Yes. Um, would it be fair to say that you were hanging out drinking? Yes. Um, would it also be fair to say that You occasionally drink too much? Objection, Ms. Sustained. 
would it be fair to say that, well, let me back up. Um, what were you drinking? A Mike's Hard Beverage. Um, were you aware that um, it was said that you were actually drinking vodka? No. Hold on. When there's an objection, I need to rule on it first, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, sustain that mischaracterizes the previous testimony. Next question. So, it would be fair to say that you were drinking? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you were a little intoxicated? I was not. Uh, how much did you drink that day? One of a Mike's Heart Alcohol beverage. And around what time of the day was that? I don't remember. Was it um, shortly before meeting up with the alleged defendant or was it sometime before? It was before. Did you have anything to drink after? No, I did not. Um, you stated that you were engaging in a conversation with the alleged defendant uh, via the telephone. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Texas phone calls? Yes. Um, were those texts and phone calls of, what, what nature were they of? Me and Mr. Brooks were arguing throughout the day. In the texts and phone calls? Yes, we were. Um, if there were, uh, if the conversation was argumentative, why would you agree to meet up with the alleged defendant? I do not know. Um, do you recall how the, the media was supposed to be set up? I don't recall. Did you at any time ask the alleged defendant to meet up with you? Well, I told Mr. Brooks where I was. Did you at any time ask to meet up with the alleged defendant? No, I did not. So it would be fair to say that the alleged defendant just came where you were? Yes, I told you where we were. And obviously, we were going to hang out. I never told Mr. Brooks to hang out with me. I told him where we were. So why would, if there was an argumentative conversation prior to you meeting up with the alleged defendant, why would you tell the alleged defendant where you were? Objection has to Sustained. You just stated that you really don't know the city of Waukesha. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So how would you know exactly where you were? Because I was with Corey and she's familiar with this area. Would it be fair to say that Corey overheard these conversations between you and the alleged defendant? Yes, she was my roommate. She heard every conversation almost. When you say every conversation, what would that when refer she, to? When she was in the room with me, when I was always talking to so, her. It would be fair to say that you were engaged in conversation with the alleged defendant before you even left the women's shelter? Yes. And those argumentative conversations continue into your hanging out? Yes. Would it be fair to say that that's what led you to drink? No. Would it be fair to say you were drinking because that's what you wanted to do? Yes. Is it true that one of the rules and requirements of being at the women's shelter is no drugs and no alcohol? Would that be fair to say? Yes, but when I was drinking, it was at Frame Park. I was not at the women's shelter. Would it be fair to say that you knew you had to come back into the women's shelter at some point that day, that they have a curfew? Yes, and I made it before curfew. Let me back up a little bit. 
you did state that part of the rules and requirements for being in the women's shelter is no drugs and no, no alcohol, correct? Yes, it was not in the women's shelter. That's not what I'm asking. It's part of the requirement and rules of the women's shelter, no drugs, no alcohol. Yes. Sustained. Next question, Mr. Brooks. Do, is there any type of drug and alcohol testing at the women's shelter? I don't know, no. No or you don't know? I don't know. Would it be fair to say that if it was found that you were engaging in drugs and alcohol that you might have lost your place at the women's shelter? I'll object, I don't see how this is relevant. Sustained, next question. So around what time were you hanging out with uh, Miss Corey, you said? What? I don't remember. Do you remember where you were at? Frame Park. Do you remember where in Frame Park? No. And approximately at what time did you meet up with the alleged defendant? I don't remember. Um, how long were you... Um, with the alleged defendant. Do you remember that? Approximately 30, 35 minutes. Do you recall what... Uh, well, you, you said that during this time you were with the alleged defendant that there was a arguing going on. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you remember what that argument was about? He was arguing with me about money because I did not bail him out. You also said that um, well let me back up from that a little bit. If you knew that the, the conversation was becoming volatile why did you still meet up with the alleged defendant? I don't know. To your knowledge, did the alleged defendant know anything about the city of Waukesha? Yes. And what did the de alleged defendant know about Waukesha? He told me, Mr. Brooks told me that his first child's mother lives in Waukesha. Do you know that to be a fact? No, that's just what Mr. Brooks told me. Were you, are you aware that uh, the alleged defendant, in fact, has no uh, mother of any child that lives in the city of Waukesha. Objection. If Mr. Brooks wants to testify, he should do so in a different statement of facts. Sustained. You don't need to answer that. Yes, ma'am. Other than what you can recall about what the alleged defendant told you that they knew about Waukesha, um, how did the alleged defendant meet up with you in the location that you gave? He already, Mr. Brooks already knew where Frame Park was. Mr. Brooks previously had been to Waukesha plenty of times before. He's told me that. And when, when was that told to you and what conversation? Was it that day? Before that. I'm not sure which day it was. I just know he knows about Waukesha. So, would it be fair to say that when you told the alleged defendant where you were, that the alleged defendant knew exactly where you were? Yes. And how would the alleged defendant know that? Because Mr. Brooks already knew Waukesha, he knew exactly where to go. Did you at any time give directions where you may have been? How could I give directions when I barely knew Waukesha myself? Is that a no? That's a no, sorry. That's okay, thank you. So, if you barely knew Waukesha yourself, 
Where did you get the information of where you were from, where you where you were at I at the time of the conversation via telephone? I left the women's shelter with Corey, and she knows that location. She told me what Frame Park was. I didn't know the name. And you, would it be fair to say, assuming from what you just said, that you were with the alleged defendant for approximately around 30 minutes or so? Yes. And during that time, did you make uh, any disparaging remarks or anything to entice the argument to escalate? No. So you didn't say anything at all during your 30 minutes with the alleged defendant? No, because I was crying the whole time because Mr. Brooks was yelling at me, arguing with me. So you said absolutely nothing at all? I was crying the whole time. Did you say anything? No. Um, a few more things. No. Um, a few more questions. You, you said that, uh, during this, well, once you had got out of the vehicle, as you say, um, you stated that, uh, your friend, Miss Corey, pulled you away from the vehicle because it swerved? Yes, it was in the video. You do know that we just saw the video, would that be fair to say? Yes, but there's two angles of the video. Well, we only saw one, so I'm referring to the yes, video that we saw. Corey pulled me out the way when Mr. Brooks made a U-turn. And you almost swerved into Miss Patterson, which is me. Would it be fair to say that the video does not show that? There's different angles, but the video does not show that. The video we watched. So the video that we just watched, that the jury just saw, there is no uh, swerving of the vehicle and you being pulled back. Would that be fair to From say? From that far angle, you can kind of see it. Yes. Would that be fair to say? That you there's answered the question, Mr. Brooks. Next question. Under 906.11 sub 1 sub C, I direct your attention to that next question. Do you recall what was said during the uh, the altercation between uh, uh, was it is it Miss Corey and the alleged defendant? No, I don't remember. Would it be fair to say that you were standing right there? Yes, I just don't remember what was being said. Do you recall reporting anything that may have been said during that incident? No. Did you give a statement to anything that may have been said again, uh, during that incident? No. Was anything directed towards you verbally in that incident? Yes. Corey told, said, told Mr. Brooks, don't ever hit my effing friend again. I remember that part, that was in the beginning. Do you remember anything else that may have been said? No. Do you recall anything being said by uh, Nick to the alleged defendant? No. Do you recall the alleged defendant saying anything to Nick? No, I don't remember. You also stated that um, right after this incident, you um, talked to law enforcement. Would that be fair to say? Yes. 
at any time did you report any any abuse? Yes. And what did you report? That you hit me. <coughs> and you gave a statement to that effect? No, not to that police officer, but the detectives at the women's shelter. Well, I'm referring to right during, well, oh, I don't remember after the incident. I don't remember what I told that police officer. Just one quick second, I'm reading from the statement, if I may. You may. Do you remember what was said by the alleged defendant when that incident ended? No, I do not remember. Do you remember uh, reporting in your statement that the last thing he said to me was F U B, erase my number? Do you remember that? I don't remember. Would it be fair to say that you reported that this was said? I don't remember. Do you remember giving a statement to that effect? No. Would it be fair to say that you gave a statement? No, I don't remember. I gave a statement to the detectives at the Women's Center. So That's would it be fair? I'm sorry, I, I didn't know if you answer. Yes. All right, next question. Would, would it be fair to say that your memory is kind of cloudy of that day because you were intoxicated? No. There's a, there's a lot of things in this statement that you don't seem to remember. Is that fair to say? <laughs> Sustained. Next question. Would it be fair to say that you reported two different incidents? Yes. Um, do you remember the dates of those incidents that you reported? The 20th and the 21st. Would it be fair to say that there was no incident on the 20th? No. Would it be fair to say that you were initially not truthful with law enforcement? No. Do you recall uh, making a statement to law enforcement on uh, November the 22nd of 2021? I don't remember. I made this statement on the 21st of the day of the parade when I met the detectives that night. Do you recall making a second statement the next day? Or the next morning, rather, which would have been the 22nd of November 2021? Um, yes, I did, actually. Yes, I did. Do you recall what you reported that day? I told them about the 20th when I met with Mr. Brooks and all we did was argue. And you hit me then too. So you reported incidents for two days in a row? Yes. Do you recall um, at any time telling law enforcement that you were not truthful and wanted to be truthful at that point? No. So you never made a statement to, to your knowledge that you fabricated a reported abuse incident? No. One second here, I'm reading from you.
to the best of your knowledge, do you remember talking with a detective? Bur um, I don't want to butcher this name, Your Honor. I don't know how to pronounce it. You can spell it. That's helpful. Uh, a detective, uh, B E H R E N D T. Detective or an officer? Uh, it says detective, Your Honor. Okay, ask your question. Um, do you remember speaking with that detective? Yes. Do you remember what you reported to that detective? I don't remember. Um, I'm reading directly from the statement, Your Honor, if I may. Ask your question. Do you remember reporting to that detective saying you were not completely forthright with all of the information that you had given because you were afraid of you were afraid to get other people involved in your drama or your business? I don't remember that. And I'll object and move to strike based on the fact that I think I'm safe in saying that that is not from the report which the defendant is referring to. The objection is sustained. I'll move, I'll uh, grant the motion to strike by the state uh, of the question and any response that may have been elicited before I address the objection. Your Honor, quick question on that. I'm, I'm reading directly from the report. Do you remember at any time uh, speaking with uh, Officer Guth? Yes. And do you recall on what date that was? Um, November 21st. Do you remember what you reported on November the 21st? That me and Mr. Brooks, I, went, I met with Mr. Brooks at Frame Park. Me and Mr. Brooks got into altercation. You hit me. I jumped out of your car and I walked and met my friend Corey. You followed me. And then after that, Nick and Miss Corey, they called the police officer. And then you drove off. Just one second, Ryan. Do you recall reporting to Officer Guth that you were not completely forthright with the information that you reported? I don't remember. And no, I, actually no, I did not say that. I apologize. So reading from what was reported to Officer Guth states that what I learned from Erica Patterson was that when I spoke to her on the previous evening with Officer Garrett, uh, was that the pronunciation, Your Honor? I'm sorry. I don't have it in front of me. I'm not sure. 
she was not completely forthright with all of the information she had given. Would that be fair to say? What was your question? Do you recall in your reporting to Officer Guth mm -hmm. that you were not forthright with the information that you gave? No. I don't recall that. So to the best of your recollection, at any time that you reported incidents to any law enforcement, at any time do you recall being untruthful? No. So do you remember uh Do you remember the date and time of the first incident that you alleged? I don't remember the time, but it was November 20th. Do you remember what time of day that may have been? I just said I don't remember. Do you remember where you were at? Brain Park. So would it be fair to say that both alleged incidents that you are alleging happened at Frank Park? The second incident on November 21st did not happen on Frame Park. We were driving around and he hit me. What the I'm asking incident. is where you were at when you met up. Frame Park, yes. On That's both, not what you on both just said. Educators. Yes. That's how Mr. Brooks knew where Frame Park is. He already knew Waukesha area in the first place. Same park. Yes. Do you remember where you were at during the in Frame Park? No, it was in the parking lot. The first side of the parking lot, kind of by the baseball field, I think that is. If that do is the baseball field. Do you recall who you were with? Nobody. I was with Corey on November 21st, and the first day on um, November 20th, I was by myself. So it would be fair to say that you went to, to the park alone? Yes. I met up with Mr. Brooks on, intentionally on the 20th, yes. Were you drinking that day? No. And how did you know how to get to Frank Park, as you call it? I knew how to get to Frank Park because I'd been there the previous times before that with Miss Corey. Walking past it, I knew how to get there because Corey walked with me that day too. I just was not with her. She walked towards there with me. And so then you separated? Yes. Did you separate from uh, Miss Corey at any time during the 21st? Yes, I did. She left with Nick and I was with Mr. Daryl Brooks. Do you recall to the best of your knowledge that it might have been someone else that she was with, that was with you that day? She was by, her, which day? Are you clarifying? Which day? Um, November the 21st of 2021. She was with Nick that day. The entire day? Yes. And you guys separated from that point? Yes. Would it be fair to say you guys separated after hanging out and drinking? Mr. Brooks, under 906.11, sub 1, sub C, you need to move on to a new topic. We've, you've been over this multiple times. It's been asked, it's been answered. Now it's under my authority under 906.11 sub 1 sub, e, sub C, you need to move on. So to the best of your knowledge, well, let me back up. How did you communicate with the alleged defendant on November 20th of 2021? Phone calls. Um, strictly phone calls, Texas? Both. Mostly phone calls. Do you remember what was said in those Texas and phone Same calls? Same conversation we had on the 21st. He was mad because I wasn't giving him money from not bailing him out. So why would you meet up with the alleged defendant that day? Because I just wanted to. We have a 15-year-old together. I mean, I, I was always going to talk to you then. 
do you remember if there was uh, any agreed upon meeting up that day? Yes. By you, by the alleged defendant? Both. Uh, do you remember the reason why you were meeting up? I just said why. So it would have been just to conversate? To... Just to conversate. Would it be fair to say that you could have communicated strictly by the phone? Yes. Objection. Under 906.11 sub 1 sub C, the objection is sustained. Next topic, if you have one, Mr. Brooks. You said that you came to Wisconsin from uh, another state. Would that be fair to say? Atlanta, Georgia, yes. June 13, 2021. Why did you leave Georgia? We were coming out here for two weeks and I never went back. Um, can you state why you never went back? Number one, I came out here, I didn't have money. Number two, I had no way to get back. And you were always, uh, Mr. Brooks was always physical. So at any time were you ever um, offered money to go back to Georgia or did anybody at any time no. ever no did anybody at any time ever uh, <coughs> lend any help to help you go back to Georgia no. did you to the best of your regulation did you want to go back to Georgia Objection. sustained next question please So, why didn't you file a report with law enforcement uh, of no on November the 20th after you alleged that you were abused? Because I've been dealing with it for so many years, I just didn't do it. So, I don't see what this has anything to do with this case. How, how long have you known the alleged defendant again? Since I was 15. I'm 32 now. Would it be fair to say that um, you lived in different states from the alleged defendant? Yes, but I... Oh, I'm sorry, that there was... I was going to object and ask for a clarification on the timeline there. I'll sustain the objection, rephrase the question. I, I was going to get to that, Your Honor. Would it be fair to say that during the duration of the time knowing the alleged defendant that the majority of that time you did not live in the same area or state yeah off, yes off and on i met mr brooks in reno nevada i've moved out of reno nevada in 2017 to atlanta georgia i moved mr brooks throughout i've known him throughout with back and forth off and on the whole the whole 16 years me, me and mr brooks were not together but it was off and on Did you guys live in the same area off and on during that time? Sustained. Out of the 16 years you say it was, correct? Yes, off and on, on, Mr. Brooks. How much of that, of that time did you actually spend with the alleged defendant? Objection, always. Sustained, also under 906.11, sub 1, sub C, move on. At the time of this alleged incident, were you in the uh, alleged defendant in any kind of relationship? Yes. And were you a couple? Were you just co-parenting? Or we what was the nature of the relationship? Is basically we were life. together. I wouldn't have came to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, if I was not with him. So it'd be fair to say that you were in a committed relationship. Yes.
One second, Your Honor. I'll just go on for a second. Would it be fair to say? Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't go ahead. Know. There was a water bottle being provided. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. How did, how did, uh, before you came back into contact with the alleged defendant, how long had it been since you had seen the alleged defendant? I don't know, but it's years couple years so it be it would be fair to say that there was a significant gap in between interactions with the alleged defendant yes um, sustained however she provided the answer it may stand next question So during your time, uh, well, approximately how long were you uh, staying around the alleged defendant before this incident on November 21st took place? I don't know the exact time. I just answered your question on the exact time. Were there uh, any separations or gaps during that time? Sustained. At any time uh, during these alleged incidents, were you with Someone other than Miss Corey? Corey and Nick the day of the 21st, and then we separated and I met back up with them. Any time during that day, were you with anyone else besides those two that you just named? Mr. Brooks, you. What about the alleged incident on the 20th? I left with Miss Corey, and then she went a whole different direction, and I went to Frame Park and met up with Mr. Brooks. recollection you were not drinking uh, both of those days that you cite the 20th for the 21st the 20th hold on mr brooks under 90611 i'm stopping this cross-examination you've asked the same question uh multiple questions multiple times um and at this point i'm going to declare that I didn't, I didn't the opportunity to cross is now concluded i didn't know that was the same question your honor Mr. Brooks, it's been asked and answered multiple times. So with that, I'm going to turn to the state to see if they have any redirect. Just some brief clarification. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Patterson, after the parade incident, that, which took place after the video we saw, right? Yes. Okay. Do you remember meeting with detectives Jessica Barron and Steve Booth that night? Yes. Okay. And you gave a statement to them that night, correct? Yes. You gave a second statement to Detective Guth the next day. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. So let's talk very briefly about that first statement, the night of the 21st, mm -hmm. the night yes. of the parade incident. Yes. You told them about an incident that had happened between you and the defendant on November 20th. Is that right? Yes. And you also told them about an argument that you had had with the defendant on the 21st. Is that right? Yes. But you left out the part about any physical violence on the 21st. Is that accurate? Yes. 
And then when you met with Detective Guth for your second statement, on yes. the 22nd, that's when you confirmed that there had been violence with Mr. Brooks on the 21st, is that right? Yeah, yes, well they seen my eye on the 21st when they came, so I did let them know about the, the incident on the 21st, I okay. did. The next day I let him know about the, the incident on the 20th is what happened. Okay, All Yes. Right. thank you. To make it better, <laughs> sorry. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. You may step Thank down. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, and uh, any reason to keep her under subpoena from the state? No. From the defense? Yes. Did you have a subpoena for her? Um, I, to my understanding, I was supposed to. Uh, all right, I'll take that up in a little bit. For now, I'd ask that she be maintained under the state's subpoena until I can yes. clarify that issue. All right, um, state have the next witness available. Yes, we do. Mr. Brooks, please. Um, before the next witness comes in, if my ladies and gentlemen of the jury want to take a quick moment to stand. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right. Uh, the state may call its next witness. All right. Detective, please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. When you are seated, if you would please state your first and last names for the record and spell both. Detective Stephen Guth, S-T-E-V-E-N, G-U-T-H. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Detective, what do you do for a living? I'm a detective for the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you worked for the police department? 20 years. How long as a detective? Um, seven years. Okay. Were you working as a detective on November 22nd of 2021? Yes, I was. On that date, did you meet with a person by the name of Erica Patterson? Yes, I did. What was the purpose of meeting with Ms. Patterson? I wanted to clarify her statement to me uh, regarding a domestic related incident that had occurred. And uh, as part of that clarification, did you get into a squad car with Ms. Patterson? I did. And what was the point of doing that? I wanted to um, ride in the car with her since she was unfamiliar with the geography of the city and so that she could point out to me specific directions on where she went with Mr. Brooks. Can we have exhibit one up on the screen for the jury, please, and for the witness? Uh, permission to publish exhibit one. Granted. I'll go over here for a moment. <laughs> it's the rear laptop, correct? Yep. Laptop? Yep. You, uh, and you said publish, right? Yes, please. All right. Just <coughs> confirm that that's what you want? It is. All right. Then permission to publish is granted. Top right corner of this exhibit. Okay, uh, where did you first, uh, or where did this journey with Miss Phillips, or Patterson, excuse me, Miss Patterson begin? Um, once I picked her up, we moved to Frame Park, and we parked 
in the area that's um, close to the, where that star is, where it says Frame Park. In the top right corner? Correct. Okay. And where did you go from there? Um, from there, we traveled um, on Baxter. So the way that the frame, the frame Park is here, can I touch the screen? Do we have the ability to let the witness touch and yes. mark? Um, just let us know at what points we'll capture it, and then we can also print it at another location and if need be. <laughs> So we met generally in that area that's highlighted now in yellow. And we traveled in this direction on Baxter. Okay. And then what? Uh, as we continued down Baxter, we got to this street called Buckley. And then from Buckley, we made a right turn and ended up on Carina. Uh, let's go, go back up. Yeah, don't and move the screen until we can capture it. Let's capture there. Uh, and we probably need to. If you saw the little number counting the percentage, that means it's done capturing it. Once it's. Okay. Can we clear that now? Yes. And let's zoom out. I'll refer, we'll get that printed and we'll have that marked as 1A. Okay. Now, from where you left off there after you made that right turn on the Buckley, can you? Can you draw on the screen where you went next? Yeah, so again on Buckley, we did travel down Buckley to Carina. And then on Carina, we made a left turn, traveling along the river till we reached Barstow. And then from Barstow, we made a right turn, traveling up northwest Barstow, all the way to the Barstow Hill, where it's highlighted in green there, up the Barstow, Barstow Hill, and it's going to come off the map, but all the way up to Bidwell. Okay. And did she indicate at what point you should turn around? Uh, at Bidwell and Northwest Barstow. Did she indicate where she went with Mr. Brooks after that? Well, she jumped out of the car at Bidwell and Northwest Barstow. And what happened, according to Ms. Patterson, at that point? Um, at that point, she started making her way back the same path, uh, back to Frame Park, um, again, because she's unfamiliar with the geography, she just used the same route that she just went. Okay. Did she at any point mention uh, a gas station on that route? Yes, she did. Do you see that gas station depicted on Exhibit 1? Yes, I do. Can you tell us where it is? Yes, it's the mobile gas station highlighted with a star, and I'll circle it in that area. Do we have a screen capture here? Yes. The screen capture has been done when we... Uh, get that color print brought to the courtroom that will be area. Do we have a screen capture here? Yes. The screen capture has been done when we uh, get that color print brought to the courtroom that will be 1B. Okay. And uh, this map is from, you're familiar with the Waukesha, right? Yes. This is an accurate map of Waukesha. Yes, it is. And the markings that you put on the screen here, that's an accurate uh, representation of the route you took with Ms. Patterson on November 22nd? Yes, it is. Move exhibits 1A and 1B in evidence. Any objection? Yes. The objection noted it's overruled. Exhibits 1A and 1B are received by the court. That's all I have for this witness. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Officer Lee was a detective. Detective. Oh, sorry about that. I, I uh, good morning, uh, Detective Lee. Good morning. Uh, you've uh, been in law enforcement for over 20 years. Would that be fair to say? Correct. Um, at any time during your over 20 years of service, um, have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Sustained. Um, can you state for the record if the plaintiff is in court today? Objection. Sustained. Have you ever seen the plaintiff? Objection. Sustained. Do you even know of the plaintiff? Objection. Sustained. 
ever spoken to the plaintiff. Objection. On what grounds? Sustained. On what grounds? It's sustained. Next question. May I ask what grounds you're in? Mr. Brooks, do you have another question? I do. I, I was just trying to follow the rules that you said by saying that a, an objection has to have a, a basis. So Unless just, it's self-evident to the court. It's sustained. Next question. On what grounds you're on? Do you have another question? Otherwise, under 906.11, um, I will give the state an opportunity to ask any redirect. Yes, I do have more questions. Go ahead. At any time, did uh, Erica Patterson uh, report any um, domestic incident to you? Yes. Do you remember um, uh, the dates that she reported or date? Yes. At any time during that... Uh, Report, did you find uh, her to be untruthful? No. Just one second. reading from the narrative of uh, your report and specifically the part where it says what I learned from Erica Patterson was that when I spoke to her on a previous evening with Detective Barrett she was not completely forthright with all of the information she had given would that be fair to say correct so would it also be fair to say that from the report that you wrote that you're acknowledging that there was some untruth in the report reported to you. No, that's incorrect. You, when I spoke to her on the previous evening with Detective Barrett, she was not completely forthright. You said what you learned was that she was not completely forthright. So is it fair to say that there was some untruth to the report? No. So why would that be in the report? For various reasons. The most common reason is that when domestic victims report crimes that happen to them, a lot of times they're very afraid of their abuser. And so they don't always give all details because if they do give all details about what happened to them, they feel like they might have something happen to them in a future date from that same abuser. So would it be fair to say that you could have just stated what you just said in your report? I did state that. Not in the report. Would it have, would, is it fair to say that obviously you, you've been in law enforcement for a very long time? Is that a question? Would it be fair to say that it could have re been reported in the way that you just stated instead of stating in your report that there was untruthfulness? I didn't state untruthfulness in my report. If you further read in, into the report, I state what I just stated. So would it be fair to say, though, that there the information wasn't completely forthright. Yes.
to the best of your knowledge, would it be fair to say that there um, was, in fact, only one incident? No. And would you be basing that, to the best of your knowledge, would you be basing that answer, the last answer, on hearsay? No. So you you would be basing your answer on um, eyewitness accounts? I'll check that relevance for grounds. I'm going to sustain the objection. Next question, or you can rephrase it. Would it be fair I don't know how I can rephrase that without asking it the same way, Your Honor. Just give me a second, if I may. At any time uh, during your um, report or time spent with Ms. Patterson, um, did she state um, where she may have been on November 20th of 2021? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Where, what she said? I recall what she said, yes. To the best of your knowledge, do, do you believe that she was being truthful? Yes. I'm just going to advise the jury that ultimately it's the jury's determination of credibility that matters. Um, and you heard me read an instruction yesterday. That's obviously the instruction you'll follow ultimately in the jury room. To the best of your knowledge, do you recall um, any injuries on the first reported incident? Yes. Do you recall what they were? Yes. And do you recall any injury on the reported incident from the day of the parade? Yes. Do you remember what they were? Yes. Can you state on the record what they were? On which day? The 20th. Her mouth was injured due to being slapped in the mouth. Do you... Can you recall for any reason why that would not be in the report? It is. To the best of your knowledge, can you Can you say where in the report that would be? Because I don't see it in the um, report that I have here before me. Are you asking me which report states that she was injured in the mouth? Are you asking if it was reported to me that she was injured in the mouth? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you why is there no injuries reported for that incident, alleged incident? It was reported to me that she was injured in the mouth by being slapped on the 20th. Are you aware that that was not testified to? No. What grounds would that be hearsay? Mr. Brooks, it's up for the jury to determine 
the truthfulness of anything that's said or testified to in court. Okay. He was not present for any other testimony, so it would not be proper for him to comment on that. Next question. Would it be fair to say that the reported alleged incident Would it be fair to say that the reported alleged incident from the 20th is very, very vague in your uh, report? Would that be fair to say? And by vague, I mean there's literally three sentences. I don't have the report in front of me if you're I have referring to vagueness. That's why I went back on the 22nd to interview her again to clarify information. So, uh, on the 22nd, and this is your report I'm reading from, it says, due to the influx of information, we were unable to make sense of all the information. Would that be fair to say? Correct. So, it would be also fair to say that that would basically state that there were some things you weren't sure about. Yes. You also say in your report that you had learned uh, had learned that there were two other individuals um, that may have been involved in the incident, would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you remember the names of the two individuals? Yes. Would you state on the record what the names of the other two individuals were? Corey Runkle and the other individual's first name is Nick. I don't remember his last name. Did uh, Corey Bronco in any way report uh, anything about the incident to you? Not which incident? Hold on. Which incident are we talking about? Um, from November the 21st of 2021. Thank you. With that clarification, are you able to answer? Not to me directly. Do you recall if you had learned of any information about uh what Corey Runkle might have said to any other law enforcement? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Yes. Would you like to state on the record what that was that you may have learned? I learned that she was with Erica Patterson on the 21st, on November 21st, 2021, when she was, when Erica Patterson was being was involved with a domestic incident. She responded to help her friend. Um, do you recall of uh, learning if Corey Runkle was with Erica Patterson on November 20th of 2021? I don't think Eric, I don't think Corey Runkle was with Erica Patterson on the 20th. state in the report that um, you were with um, Erica Patterson to kind of uh, basically you took her on a drive to pretty much um, retrace her steps. I, would that be fair to say? Yes. At any time, did any incident about November the 20th of 2021 come into your conversations with Erica Patterson? You're talking about during the drive. During the drive. I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. 
No, I just want to make sure that the question's clear. Go okay. ahead. I believe we did talk about it, um, both incidents from the 20th and the 21st. Do you recall what was said? Yes. Do you recall putting that into your report? I recorded our conversation. I don't know if I put every detail of our whole recording in the report. Would in be? fact, I know I didn't. So not every detail from our recorded conversation is in that report. The report is a summary. For any reason to your knowledge, why would uh, details of incident not be reported accurately? It's also vague, sustained. To the best of your knowledge, why is that conversation that was supposedly had not in your report at all? Objection. This states the evidence. Sustained. Just one second. Sorry, Your Honor, I got tons of paperwork. <laughs> Just one second, Your Honor. stated that you interviewed Ms. Patterson on multiple days, would that be fair to say? Yes. And on both of those times that you interviewed Ms. Patterson, did the reporting ever deviate? Mr. Brooks, under 906, 11. You need to clarify your question. Um, it's ambiguous. It's confusing. What I'm, what I'm getting at by that question is, did what Ms. Patterson said change from interview to interview? No. So at, so at any time, so at any time during your interview, did you learn less or learn more? I learned more in my second interview. So it would be fair to say that the information you learned changed. Would that be fair to say? Objection. I'm overruled. He may answer. It did not change. I just gained, learned more information. More information about what alleged incident, the 20th, the 21st? Both, Both. honestly. I'm Both. sorry. Both, honestly. So, would it be fair to say with, was it two interviews that you did or three? Two. So, with both interviews, you continue to learn things that you didn't know from the previous interview? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. Would it be fair to say that would it be fair to say that just one second, Your Honor. To the best of your um, knowledge, did 
Erica Patterson give any report to any other law enforcement that you were aware of? No. So to the to the best of your knowledge, you were the only detective that interviewed Ms. Patterson? Objection. Asked and answered. Sustained. To the best of your knowledge, were you the only one that interviewed Ms. Patterson? Same objection. Sustained. At any time, did you learn anything about the alleged incidents that Ms. Patterson claimed from any other law enforcement? Objection. Same again. Sustained. At any time where you, um, or at any time did you view the uh, video footage from White, White Rock School? Yes. Do you remember what you saw in those videos? Yes. You stayed on the record what you saw? Under 90611, I'm going to advise the witness not to answer that video is in evidence. It's, it will speak for itself. Um, and his understanding of what's in there, uh, at least at this point, uh, is not relevant. Can you say what uh, was the date of the video that you saw? November 21st, 2021. Did you see any video from the other alleged incident from November 20th? I'll object. I don't see the relevance to anything that happened on the 20th. Sustained. Do you know if there might have been any video from the alleged incident on November 20th? Same objection. Sustained. Grounds. It's not relevant. My ex how is it not relevant? Next question. There's not a chart related to the 20th, sir. It's not relevant. I've given you leeway to ask questions at this point under 90611. Move on. Just so, just so I'm clear, you have never had any, any interaction with the plaintiff? Objection. Sustained. You've never seen the plaintiff? Objection. Sustained. Never spoken to the plaintiff? Objection. Sustain. Move on. Just so, just so I'm clear, you have never had any, any interaction with the plaintiff. Objection. Sustained. You've never seen the plaintiff. Objection. Sustained. Never spoken to the plaintiff. Objection. Sustained. Never seen. Uh, do you see the plaintiff in court today? Objection. Sustained. Do you know if there is a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Sustained. Have you had any prior knowledge of the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Sustained. To, would it be fair to say that you know you do not know of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Sustained. On grounds. What grounds? Under 90611, I'm declaring the cross-examination now closed. Do you have any redirect for this witness? Briefly, Your Honor. Thank you. Detective, when you reported that Erica Patterson had been uh, less than completely forthright with you, what did she leave out the first time you spoke with her? She left out the incident that happened to her on November 21st, 2021. The incident where she accused Mr. Brooks of punching her? Correct. Okay. You testified on cross-examination that in your general experience, victims of domestic violence uh, do not report 100% of the details all the time. Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Grounds. He hasn't asked a question yet. Oh, grounds for the. He can ask his question. This witness testified about his experience based on a question you asked, so 
the cross the redirect is appropriate. I just ahead. say that every situation is different, Your Honor. Um, which we do know that. testify, so no, he may not say that. The jury will strike that comment made by Mr. Brooks. You'll have an opportunity if you so choose to testify at a later point in time in this trial. The state may ask its question. Thank you. Did Erica Patterson provide to you a specific reason for her situation why she was not 100% forthright with you? Yes. What was that reason? She was extremely afraid of Mr. Brooks. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, detective, you may step down. Any reason to keep this witness under subpoena from the state? Not from the state. Anything from Mr. Brooks? Yes. All right. I'll take that up later and reserve that until I can review that with the parties. All right. This would be an excellent opportunity to take a mid-morning break. It's 1049, um, about 15 minutes. All rise for the jury. We are in recess.
things before we bring the jury back out. So we are on the record. Um, Mr. Brooks, I was provided with information that your test result was hand delivered to you, folded. Did you receive that? Uh, I was made aware of, of my test. I didn't look at it yet, so. Do you have it with you? It is, it's in my paperwork somewhere. All right, I need you to uh, locate it and open it up, please. Um, may I ask the reason why that would be? Mr. Brooks, you raised this issue yourself and I'd like to know um, the result. I would too, but I was kind of in the middle of preparing for my defense, so I... Mr. Brooks, find the piece of paper and open it up and read it, please. Your Honor, I don't consent to being talked to in that fashion. Your lack of consent is noted for the record. Please find the piece of paper, open it up, and please read it. I will not consent to that, Your Honor, or do I agree to that, Your Honor? I do not. Mr. Brooks, then I'm going to advise the Sheriff's Department to find the piece of paper and hand it to me so that I can read it. And so that those are your two options. What would be the basis for that, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, this is an issue that you raised, and I need to bring it to finality and know what the test result is. Okay, with all due respect, it was uh, a motion that I raised. All right, um, I'm going to clear the courtroom. We're going to go off the record, and uh, we're going to find that piece of paper, and I'm going to... <clears throat> address it when that's done.
excuse everyone from the courtroom, take a recess so that the test result could be obtained and if necessary by reasonable force. Um, it's my understanding there was some type of situation or altercation between Mr. Brooks and the deputies. Um, ultimately, though, I think he was taken into the bullpen. He was brought back out, but it was very clear to me that he was upset. Um, I think understandably so, uh, but um, I needed to make a record of what was being done. Uh, including that I have obtained the test result uh, so that there's an accurate record in this case uh, related to the motion that was raised previously by uh, Mr. Brooks. I want Mr. Brooks to know that I am not um, removing him from uh, when the jurors are brought back in. It was just simply because he was upset. Um, he was um, very loud when I walked into the courtroom before going on uh, back on the record. Um, he was uh, yelling about his constitutional rights being violated. Um, I advised him that if there was any type of use of force that he wanted to complain about, he could certainly do that through the proper channels uh, with the sheriff's department. But just given his state of agitation and my need to make a record, um, I had him taken to the other courtroom. He is currently muted. I do not intend to go forward uh, with additional testimony, ultimately I'm going to take an early lunch break because of this, um, but I will make a record of the following. I have the result. Um, I am going to scan it, have my clerk scan it. It will be filed as confidential, though. It won't be available to the public, uh, but I, it's there for appellate purposes, but I can confirm that the test result for COVID-19 was negative. And again, I required... Uh, the sheriff's department to provide that result to me um, and it was and it will remain under seal. I realize I'm disclosing that result but I feel obligated to do that given the motion that was raised two days ago by uh, Mr. Brooks. Again, I do I intend to take an early lunch uh, so that will hopefully give Mr. Brooks an opportunity if he so chooses to review the result himself. It was put in front of him. I did see that he either shoved it or tossed it or just dismissed it. It looked like it went on the floor uh, when it was put in front of him, but we'll certainly have the deputies give that to him again. During the recess for lunch, uh, Mr. Brooks will also be given the opportunity to change into street clothes if he so chooses. But when we come back, he will be in this courtroom. I agree. Uh, Mr. Brooks was making a couple of statements about how he was abiding by the rules and being respectful, things of that nature. I agree. He's done an excellent job while in court here this morning. He's been respectful of the rules. Um, he made some um, early on. I let him you know, make his uh, objections or lack of consent. Um, he did that respectfully. Um, when I said I was moving on, he generally was able to do that. We were able to get through two witnesses. He was able to follow along, ask cogent, clear, um, responsive, and articulate objections. He was able to elicit uh, information from the witnesses um, regarding either their memory, their credibility, um, and other things. Um, generally speaking, he's um, been able to competently uh, represent himself and provide, uh, again, solid cross-examination this morning. So I'm going to give him an opportunity to hopefully settle back in and to come back here um, when we return from lunch. So with that, we are in recess. Uh, probably come back at 1 o'clock since it's only 11.30 and we'll take the full 90 minutes for lunch today. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, we are, oh, let's get all of our audio on. All right, we are back on the record. Uh, it is 1.07 uh, p.m. Appearances are as they were previously. Um, Mr. Brooks is in the courtroom. Um, he is in jail attire, as that is his choice. Um, and I don't know if there's anything the state wants to address at this point before we continue with testimony. No, Just thank you. Check. All right, Mr. Brooks, anything you want to address at this point? It's hard for me to see his head. He's bent over, but I thought I saw him shaking his head. No, but I'll ask one more time, Mr. Brooks, anything you want me to address before the jurors are brought out to continue with testimony from witnesses. Just a little emotional right now. All right. Um, let's bring the jury out. We'll continue. I presume the state has a witness available. We do. All right. Thank you. Why don't you hold off on that, and uh, at the next appropriate time, when they're not on their way in, I can address whatever it is. Or if you want to pass me a note, you can do that as well. All right, thank you everyone. Please be seated. And good afternoon to our jury. State may call its next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The state calls Officer Jeremy Phillips. All right, good afternoon, officer. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right when you get there. Please remain standing, raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in.
solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. My first name is Jeremy, spelled J-E-R-E-M-Y. My last name is Phillips, P-H-I-L-I-P-P-S. Thank you. Go ahead, you're right back. Thank you. How are you employed, sir? I'm employed with the City of Waukesha Police Department. And how long have you worked in law enforcement? I've been in law enforcement for a total of 14 years next month. All with the City of Waukesha? I have about five months with the City of Dodgeville Police Department in Wisconsin. The rest has been with the City of Waukesha. All right. Sir, I'd like to direct your attention to the date of November 21 of 2021, please. Were you working that afternoon? I was working that afternoon, yes. What was your uh, duty or uh, assignment? I was assigned a normal patrol beat, squad area 216 with the City of Waukesha on a 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. shift. Were you aware there was a parade taking place in downtown Waukesha that afternoon? I was aware that there was a Christmas parade uh, downtown Waukesha. Were you directly assigned to work the parade? I was not assigned to work the parade. You said you were one of the officers that was just involved in general patrol of the city that afternoon. That's correct, yes. Okay. Uh, I'd like to direct your attention to a uh, time around uh, 4 o'clock or 4.30 in the afternoon. Do you recall getting um, dispatched to Frame Park? I do recall being dispatched there, yes. Do you know the exact time you were dispatched? I believe it was 4.52 p.m. approximately there. Okay. And uh, where is Frame Park located? Frame Park is rather large, but it's generally located in the downtown area off of White Rock Avenue and Baxter Avenue. What was the nature of the complaint you were responding to? I received a complaint to respond in emergency fashion, which means light and siren, for subjects fighting in the park with a knife allegedly involved. Where were you coming from? I was in the patrol area of East Moreland, uh, roughly at East Main Street at the time. That's where I was responding from. Was Main Street shut down at the time for the parade? Main Street where I was responding from was not, no. Okay. I guess let me ask a better question. Were you able to travel along Main Street to get to Frame Park? From where you were located to get to where you needed to go, did you travel on Main Street? I did not travel on Main Street to get to Frame Park. Okay. And uh, which direction did you come in from then? I came in on East Moreland, westbound, to White Rock Avenue, westbound. And uh, as you approached the area, could you see uh, individuals associated with the parade? Yes, I could, as I neared the vicinity. What do you remember seeing? As I neared the vicinity of White Rock Avenue at Baxter, directly in front of me appeared to be a unmarked patrol vehicle, silver in color, which was blocking the roadway at White Rock Avenue and Hartwell Avenue. And I believe off to the side, I could also see a marked patrol vehicle. Could you see um, any floats or people participating in the parade? At that particular time, as I arrived in the vicinity, I did not. I just saw the side of a squad car with emergency lights activated. It wasn't until a little while later I saw that there were floats and such on the other side of that patrol vehicle. The silver-colored uh, SUV with uh, lights, red and blue lights activated, do you know whose squad car that was? <clears throat> that belonged to Sergeant Dave Warner. Where did you go? When I arrived to the area, Initial dispatch information stated that this alleged fight involving a knife was somewhere in the vicinity of the Schutze building where the boat ramp was. Based on my training and experience of that vicinity, I know that the boat rental checkout is on the back side of the Schutze building. So that's the initial area I responded to and where my attention was drawn to. It's time, Your Honor. I'm going to ask your permission to put up Exhibit 1, which is the map of the area we've been working off of. Permission granted. Do 
you see that item in front of you, uh, Officer Phillips, on the screen? I do now. Okay. So that is a touch screen in front of you. If you want to draw or circle or anything like that, you may, or you can um, uh, just simply talk. I'd like you to identify for us where you came in uh, to the area. Well, it's not really blowing up, so. No, if you want it blown up, we can blow it up from our table, sorry. We'll zoom in. If you would, my word says frame park in the upper right hand corner. That would be, it looks like the vicinity that I probably responded to. I would need to see a bigger image. Is that good? That will suffice. Okay. So I responded in a direction on White Rock Avenue. Coming this way. This now is Baxter Avenue, which I would have made a right hand turn. That will suffice. Okay. So I responded in a direction on White Rock Avenue. Coming this way. This now is Baxter Avenue, which I would have made a right hand turn onto. And right about in this parking lot area is where the Schutze building exists. And then there would be a boardwalk and some trails behind that where the boat ramp would be. Okay. And, uh, You drove in that area first, right? Correct. What were you looking for? At that time, I was looking for anybody suspicious that may be involved in a fight, somebody carrying a weapon, somebody that might have been battered and bruised or obviously injured or in need of help. Okay. Did you see anybody? I did not. Did you drive around a little bit? I drove around in the parking lot of the Schutze building. There was another officer already on scene who... <clears throat> from my understanding, was already on foot in and around the vicinity of the Schutze building and advised that they could not find anybody at the Schutze building. Okay. Officer Phillips, do you see White Rock School on this map? I do, yes. Could you put an X on White Rock School? White Rock School is this elongated building right here, so I'll draw a large X through it. Okay. And you said the roadway running parallel to White Rock um, to the north is Baxter? Correct. Okay. And Baxter is the road closest to the river. There's no other roads that run along the river there. Just a, like a walking path or something, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, another officer's out on foot. What do you do? At this point, the officer came over the radio and stated he could not find anybody in the vicinity. I was listening and monitoring the radio and at some point what I thought was a reserve officer came over and uh, said that they were speaking with a couple of subjects potentially involved. So at that time I got on the radio and said I was going to attempt to meet with the caller because I didn't exactly know who this reserve officer was speaking to, how many subjects were involved, if they were actually involved or just a witness to the situation. All of that information was completely unbeknownst to me, so I decided I should probably go meet with a reserve officer and figure out who these subjects are and what the involvement was. This reserve officer was working as part of the parade, is that right? He was. He was uh, in the vicinity right at uh, Sergeant Dave Warner's location. Okay. So did you drive down there? I started to drive in that general direction uh, towards White Rock Avenue in Hartwell, which is where Dave Warner and um, Reserve Officer Troutman would have been. Before I could fully reach that intersection, there was approximately three subjects off to my right hand side on the sidewalk that were yelling, screaming, and waving, like flagging me down. Uh, the way that they were doing this, they appeared to be in distress. They appeared that they needed immediate help and certainly appeared that they needed to speak with somebody in law enforcement. Can you put a small X on the map in the approximate area where you met up with these three individuals or they were waving at you? It would have been about halfway between Baxter and where Sergeant Warner's squad was parked. So again, this is going to be an approximation, but I'm going to put that X right about here. Okay. So I assume you pulled over. I pulled over. I rolled down my passenger window and 
two of the subjects started yelling that their friend had been assaulted. So it was right at that point that they started trying to tell me that their friend had been assaulted, that um, information came over the radio on the primary dispatch channel that something had happened downtown and somebody had been hit. So at that point, my attention started to get a little bit diverted because hearing that on the radio is not something that just happens every day. That's, that perks you up uh, pretty quickly to figure out, you know, that could be a serious injury, that could be more officers needed something that affects so that took my attention away briefly. As I looked back at the subjects, uh, they started to again say that their friend had been assaulted. So I said, hold on, let me pull over so I can get out, so I can speak with you directly in person and figure out what was going on. I pulled my squad over. Yep, go ahead, I'm sorry. I pulled my squad over, I exited my uh, driver's side of the vehicle, came around to the front of my vehicle when a short black female who was wearing what appeared to be a blue coat and blue jeans walked in the front of my patrol vehicle. There was two other subjects that were with her and they started to indicate that she had been assaulted by a boyfriend of some type. I started to talk to the female who had the blue coat on and I said, okay, I said, well, what happened? Who is this person? And she tried to downplay what happened. She didn't want to be cooperative. She made comments to the effect of nothing happened. It was just a verbal argument. Uh, I'm fine. I just want to leave. Did so, you see any uh, injury on her? So at that time I did. The two subjects that were with her tried to tell her that they said, no, Erica, you need to tell him what happened. And on it, uh, she had an obvious black eye on one side of her face. The other eye also looked like it was swollen, uh, but it was a peer that she had facial injuries that were obvious. Now you said um, they referred to this person by the name of Erica, is that right? Yes. Did you eventually ask this person for her name? I did eventually ask for her name, yes. What did she tell you? She told me that her full name was Erica Patterson and that her date of birth was 10 7 of 1990. Okay. And um, were you going to investigate her complaint further? I was attempting to investigate the complaint further, yes. And then what happened? So as I was speaking to uh, this woman who identified herself as Erica, along with the two other people that were with her who I did not identify, um, the calls on the radio at that point were 1078 after 1078 after 1078. Okay, and, what does that mean? So 1078 in law enforcement jargon is officer needs immediate assistance right now, all available units. As that was being called multiple times, uh, other people were coming on the radio and stating there were subjects down in the street, then it was 10 people down, then it was 15, then it was to 30 or 40. And I had to make a decision at that point, speaking with the subjects, uh, particularly the one who appeared to be involved in the most injured, who was not being cooperative with me, that the greater danger and the clear and, and present threat that was happening downtown had to draw my attention, I had to leave. All right, the events that you've described for us so far, are those all captured on your squad video, sir? Yes. And at that time in November of 2021, were you wearing a body camera? I was not wearing a body camera at that time. So you had a, uh, a video recording device in your squad car, correct? correct? But when you exit your squad, it's no longer recording your activities unless you can be seen on the camera in front of the uh, squad, correct? I have an audio recording device on my person that okay. is synced and connected to my squad exterior windshield camera. Okay. And that uh, camera in your squad is stationary, is that correct, sir? Yes. Okay. Um, eventually then, do you leave the area where you're speaking with Erica and the other two individuals and go to Main Street? I leave the area. I tell her I'm sorry that I had to go. I went down White Rock, navigated float traffic, went down East Main Street in a westbound direction and eventually came to East Main Street at Barstow Street where I exited my patrol vehicle. Okay, I'm gonna uh, ask, oh yes, before I move away from exhibit one, could we please get a screenshot, Madam Clerk, of the drawings by Officer Phillips and then I'm gonna ask to switch to exhibit six, please. 
So for purposes of the record, I believe I'm at 1C for the capturing using the annotation feature. I think we agree with that. Yes. All right, officer. You see, uh, we've now put exhibit six on your monitor. It's not yet displayed for the courtroom. Do you see exhibit six on your monitor? Yes. Do you recognize uh, this or do you want us to play it for a few seconds? I recognize what I'm looking at. Okay. Do you believe this to be a truthful and uh, accurate uh, um, recording from your squad video that afternoon, sir? I haven't listened to it at this point, but I would believe if it's from what I'm looking at, it would be accurate to my squad video, yes. Okay. And um, you ultimately saved your squad video and, and uh, submitted it to be used as evidence in this case, correct, sir? Yes, I did. All right. And this is a clip from that squad video? It appears to be, yes. Okay. Uh, move to admit and permission to publish Exhibit 6, please. Mr. Brooks, any position on that? Uh, yeah, what, what is the grounds we haven't seen? What's in the video? Uh, your objection is noted. It is overruled. Exhibit 6 is received. Permission to publish is granted. All right, so for the record, this clip is about six minutes long. It's, it exactly ends at the 559 mark, but um, we're going to play it through Officer Phillips, and I may ask, Miss Gussie to pause at times so you can kind of describe uh, what's going on in the video but if you can just orient us what we're looking at right now please before we start playing so this is an orientation this would be White Rock Avenue facing a southwesterly direction that would go directly to Main Street this right here is Baxter Street and then what you're looking at on the right hand corner is White Rock Elementary School what about way down in the distance? It looks perhaps like it's a church steeple. So you can see what looks like the church steeple down. That's going to be uh, Main Street down there. And particularly of note, you can see what looks to be a silver colored car in the center of the roadway. That is Sergeant Waters' uh, unmarked SUV patrol vehicle. Okay, now I'd just like to make a record when he was pointing and saying this, at least initially he was using his right hand pointing to the roadway that's depicted in the still of this video image. Uh, he also said over here, or this is Baxter. You can see about midway in the frame a street sign, and there's a street that intersects. Uh, that's where he was pointing to that particular street. Again, I believe that was Baxter. Um, and uh, I believe the rest of his comments uh, comport with the record and don't need further uh, explanation or at least verification by the court so go ahead all right thank you um okay we're gonna go ahead and start to play we're at the zero mark right now where are you going now pause please i'm sorry nine second we're pausing go ahead officer so what you're looking at here is baxter street and right off to your right hand side, and I, I get that pointing at things with my hand isn't necessarily ideal, but the building over here is the Schutze building. Where those squad lights are there is the parking lot of the Schutze building. There's at least one officer already on foot in this vicinity of the Schutze building where the alleged knife fight with multiple individuals were involved. Okay, and I see, looks like red and blue lights there in the middle of the photo or the uh, video. Correct. Whose squad is that? I know one of them is Officer Nick Hendrickson. Okay. And uh, is that the officer that you were referring to earlier when you said another officer was also trying to help you find these subjects involved in the fight? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Off to the left, it looks like there's a bunch of cars parked there. Correct. Is that uh, general, general parking available to the public? That is general public parking for the Schutze building. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and play again. For the subject that are claiming that this might happen. Okay. Uh, Sergeant Waters is on the 
Are you driving on Baxter now? I am driving down the two the two I walk down towards the Whitewater School. Hispanic male, Hispanic female. Pause it, please. Whose voice was that, if you know? I'm not going to say I know 100% sure on that. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Play. <laughs> Pause. It's a little hard to see, but on the right-hand side, did you see the individuals walking down the street there? I did. Uh, my squad just passed. Um, I'm sorry, sidewalk. About, yeah. About two seconds prior, there were three individuals who were walking down the sidewalk. These are the three individuals that flagged me down on the passenger side of my car. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Let me pull over here. Okay. 
Was that you running away from your squad, sir? That was me running away, yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead and have a seat, please. There, it was a little bit difficult to hear when you asked Erica Patterson who assaulted her. Did she tell you a name? She did not, no. She did not provide you with any names? She did not. Okay. You had her name and her date of birth, and that was it at that point? That's all I could gather before I had to burn out of there as fast as I could. Okay. Now... When you got to Main Street, where'd you go? When I got to Main Street, um, as most of you probably just saw in the video, I took a westbound direction all the way down to Barstow. There's still floats in the parade. I think there was a lot of people that didn't exactly know what was happening in front of them. When I got to Barstow and exited my patrol vehicle and you saw me running down towards the center of the street, at that point, I was just trying to assist any officer, EMS, civilian, individual that was around, and it was just mass chaos, carnage everywhere. Did you attempt to render aid to some injured individuals? There was approximately two to three individuals I can remember talking to directly. They were all members of the band. I don't know which band it was. It was one of the high school bands. Uh, they were in the vicinity just west of Barstow on Main. Uh, there was a number of them laying in the street, uh, obviously injured. I had face-to-face -face contact with a few of them laying on the ground. There were parents screaming at me to help their kids. Um, I did what basic uh, measures that I could take as far as emergency life-saving goes. I checked pulses. I asked them to squeeze my finger, asked them what hurt, what they could move. Uh, the two or three I talked to could still move, they could still talk, they could tell me what hurt. There were multiple people standing around them also providing aid. At that point, uh, some of the radio traffic that I was picking up on, um, I was gathering that potentially a vehicle had driven through the parade and hit some of these individuals. I contemplated throwing some of these people in my patrol vehicle and trying to get them to a hospital. However, my vehicle just simply isn't equipped uh, to have that kind of space or room to do that. So given the fact that I didn't want to try to move anybody unnecessarily that would have caused further damage to them, especially if somebody's involved in blunt force trauma, such as a car crash. I said, hey, if you're doing fine right now, somebody leave by shortly, we'll get you an ambulance, just hang tight where you are. And that's basically what I had to ensure at least the two or three people that I came across. The third person I came across was also a band member. Uh, she was a female. Her leg was obviously injured. She was being held upright by a couple of adults. And I asked her, <clears throat> what was wrong, what was hurting, uh, if there's anything more serious with her as she was being held up. And she said, officer, I saw what happened. I saw who did this. And I said, what can you tell me? And she said, a red SUV sped through the parade and did this. Uh, she didn't say anything more than that. I said, oh, okay. I was like, stay with your family, stay with your parents. Somebody will be by with an ambulance to get you shortly. These three uh, injured individuals you spoke to, would you describe them all as being about teenage uh, years? Objection. Overruled, he may answer. Get to the ground, Your Honor. Overruled, he may answer. Are we going to answer to the question, to yes. the prosecution table, or to the jury? I'm not sure. He's looking at them answering the questions, but they're not answering the question, asking the questions. You may answer the question, sir. The three individuals that I met with initially, 
uh, had band uniforms on, and it was my understanding that the band from that vicinity right then and there was a high school band, so I would place them all at teenage age range. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Were you aware that uh, at some point a person was taken into custody in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street that was related to this uh, incident, sir? Objection, irrelevant. Overruled. I was made aware uh, a little while after my involvement directly in the downtown area, yes. Did you learn the name of the person who had been taken into custody? Yes. What was that name? I knew uh, from radio traffic at the time that it was a Daryl Brooks. I didn't know the date of birth or middle name or anything at that point. At some point later, uh, after the chaos had somewhat settled, did you have an opportunity to go back and try and investigate the initial complaint you had taken from Erica Patterson? Yes, I did. Did you attempt to um, identify Ms. Patterson fully through police records? I did identify Ms. Patterson fully uh, by positive ID, yes. And uh, did you learn of any uh, complaints that have been filed by Ms. Patterson in the past to other police agencies? Objection. Irrelevant. Um, overruled, he may answer the question that's being posed at this point. I did conduct some more investigation after my involvement uh, in the entire mass casualty incident when I went back to the police department afterwards and I was able to verify that uh, Erica Patterson had been involved in other police cases outside of Waukesha. And uh, specifically, could you find anything linking Ms. Patterson to the defendant, Daryl Brooks? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. I did find information through our reporting system and other law enforcement sources to directly link Erica Patterson to Daryl Brooks, yes. And did that information also directly link Daryl Brooks to a vehicle described as a red SUV? Yes, it did. I don't have any other questions for this witness at this time, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Mr. Brooks, you may start your cross-examination. I noticed, uh, Officer Phillips, you are in uh, uniform this afternoon. Were you scheduled to work today? Yes. So it will be fair to say that um, you would be on duty as of now if you weren't giving testimony in this matter? I would be on duty right now, yes. So it will also be fair to ask um, if it would be fair to say that you giving testimony right now, you're still getting paid for it? I am currently employed by the City of Waukesha Police Department on a working patrol shift on a normal shift for myself, yes. So with that, would it be fair to say that you are getting paid right now as we speak? Yes, I'm getting paid right now. By whom? Objection, relevance. Sustain, next question. Um, were you subpoenaed by the plaintiff in this matter? Can you rephrase the question? Were you subpoenaed to testify here today by the plaintiff? Can you explain it in another way? I was, that was pretty clear. Were you subpoenaed to testify by the plaintiff in this matter? I was subpoenaed by the Waukesha County Prosecution's Office to testify in this matter. 
And if, can you say that again just for the record? I was subpoenaed by the Waukesha County Prosecution's Office in this matter. Is the Waukesha County Prosecution's Office the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant, sustained. Do you know of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant, sustained. Have you ever seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant, have you ever talked sustained. To the, have you ever talked to the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant, sustained. Um, why are you continuing to look at uh, parties that are not asking the questions? Objection, argumentative, sustained. So, um, in the video, it's kind of hard to hear everything that was said when you uh, pulled over and interviewed the three individuals. Um, can you give a little more uh, commentary on what was actually said? Can you clarify exactly? What exactly were you told by the three individuals that you pulled over to interview? I don't remember or recall exactly what all three individuals said to me as 1078 and the screams for help by other officials over the radio were directing my attention to figure out what was also going on downtown. What I recall hearing from these individuals is that one of them indicated, one of the individuals that was not Erica, indicated that their friend had been in a fight or an altercation. So that's when I decided to pull over to try to get more information out of them. She, Erica, told me that nothing happened, that there was just a verbal altercation, that she wanted nothing to happen and she just wanted to leave. That's when another one of the individuals said, Erica, you need to report what happened. And she still didn't want to. Uh, and that was basically about the extent of it when I just tried to get her name as these calls over the radio were coming for whatever was happening downtown that was unbeknownst to me at the time. So would it be fair to say that you do recall the commentary of the interview? I'm sorry. Now I will object as uh, argumentative, Your Honor. Sustained. The word commentary mischaracterizes the evidence. It's argumentative. So, so it would be fair to say that you do recall what was said after already saying you don't recall. I object. It's argumentative. Sustained. Rephrase your question. Say that you do recall what was said after already saying you don't recall. I object. It's argumentative. Sustained. Rephrase your question. It would be fair to say that you responded to a fight at Frank Park, possibly involving a knife. That be fair to say? That is what the initial dispatch was, yes. Um, was any knife recovered from that scene? or? I did not recover a knife, no. Did you see anybody with a knife? I did not see any individual with a knife. Did you learn uh, who reported that there was a knife involved? I do not know the subject's names that actually reported the incident, no.
from your recollection from your recollection sorry just one second from your recollection um was Erica Patterson being uh, cooperative with the information that she gave you? Erica Patterson was not being cooperative with the information she was giving me, no. Do you recall uh, if the male individual uh, reported any information to you? I believe I heard a male's voice uh, during the time that I was flagged down. I don't recall what information he told me directly. But there was three individuals that you interviewed at that time. Would that be fair to say? There were three individuals present at the time I was flagged down, yes. And one of them was a male. Would that be fair to say? Correct, yes. But you don't recall um, him re relaying any type of information to you at that time? I remember hearing a male's voice. I don't remember what information that specific person told me at that time. Just so we're clear on the record. How, about how long did you conduct that interview, would you say? Was it a couple of minutes or? I'd have to look directly at the squad video for an exact timestamp. After you interviewed those three individuals, did you uh, later gain any more information of that of the incident that you were investigating at that time? I did not gain any further information regarding the specific fight that I was initially dispatched to, no. Just so we're clear for the record, you did not talk to the plaintiff about testifying. Objection. Say. Sustained. Did you say vague? Were you contacted in any way by the plaintiff to testify here today? Objection irrelevant. Sustained. Do you know if there's even a plaintiff in this matter? I was contacted by the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office to testify in this case. Do you know if that's the plaintiff in this matter? Generally, in a criminal case, the plaintiff would be the state of Wisconsin. That is my assumption in this case, that the plaintiff is the state of Wisconsin. So the state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff in this matter to your knowledge? That would be correct, yes. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Do you have any redirect? Uh, just very briefly, one question. Um, you, had, you have been asked by 
Mr. Brooks, if you did anything uh, to further investigate the initial <clears throat> fight that you were dispatched to. Do you remember that question? Yes. Did you, in fact, uh, relay to detectives who were working on this parade incident the information you had found out about the link between Erica Patterson and Daryl Brooks? Yes. To your knowledge, did detectives then follow up? To my knowledge, it's detectives that followed up on any further investigation regarding the fight itself. Thank you. Nothing else. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Go ahead, you have the, your next witness. Yes, I'd also like to move uh, Exhibit 1C into the record, please. Exhibit 1C is received. Thank you. Your objection is noted. Can I state the grounds, if I may? You may. There's a point in, in the video that was shown, like, during the, the interview part between the officer and the three individuals where that's not the exhibit we're talking about well we're talking about 1c which is the annotations to the map that were made that are captured by the annotation system that uh, the state just moved in and the court received okay i miss i didn't understand what was being referred to I was going to bring this up, but I wanted to wait. Sir, let's I take it up outside the presence of the jury later on. You'll have to remind me later. I've already received uh, the video, which is exhibit number six. That video has some language in it that you made an order on. So I just want to put that on the record. Something that you ruled Sir, on. we'll take it up outside the presence of the jury. All right? I need to keep going on. Next witness, please. State will call Kyle Edwards. All right, Mr. Edwards. Please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right. It is up a riser. When you get to the witness stand, please remain standing, raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Kyle Edwards, K-Y-L-E-E-D-W-A-R-D-S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for being here. Uh, Edwards, K-Y-L-E-E-D-W-A-R-D-S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for being here. Uh, what city or town do you live in, sir? Uh, at the time, Waukesha. Right okay. now, I live in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. So um, back in November of 2021, you lived here in Waukesha. Is that correct? correct? Okay. And I just want to ask you very briefly, do you have uh, any medical training, sir? Um, I've been in the service for 17 years, so limited combat lifesaver, you know, just basic Army warrior tasks, that type of medical stuff. Okay. And uh, on November 21 of 2021, did you make plans to attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes, ma'am. And were you attending that parade with any family members? Uh, yeah, my wife and two kids at the time. Okay. Did you travel to the area where the parade was being held by car? Yes, ma'am. And do you remember uh, what road you may have taken to approach the parade area? Uh, yeah, we uh, lived just east of Frame Park, so we crossed the river uh, and then uh, came up into the downtown area using North Street, East North Street. Okay. And uh, was there a time when you came to the intersection of North Street and Barstow? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, at the, at the corner of, uh, of East North Street and Barstow, there was a, a stoplight there. So. Okay. I'm going to put up a document that's been labeled as exhibit number seven. You'll get a chance to look at it on your screen first, sir. I 
I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, could you? There we go. Thank you. Do you see Exhibit 7 on the screen in front of you, sir? Yes, ma'am. Do you recognize what's shown in Exhibit Number 7? I do, ma'am. What do you see there, sir? Uh, so that's the intersection uh, we had stopped at. Uh, we were coming southwest on North Street, which at the time is a one-way. Uh, and stopped at the intersection of, uh, of East North Street and Barstow with a gas station on our left. Okay. Does the uh, photograph in exhibit number seven accurately represent that intersection to the best of your knowledge, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right. Move to admit uh, and permission to publish number seven, please. Any position on that, Mr. Brooks? Yeah, object. Sure, irrelevant. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 7 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Just waiting for it to come up on the screen here for everybody to see. Okay. So the uh, Roadway is clearly marked as North Street, and the other uh, roadway is clearly marked as Northwest Barstow Street. Do you see that, sir? Yes, ma'am. And then the big square kind of on the middle right-hand side of the exhibits is the gas station, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is actually a touch screen in front of you, so I'm going to ask you to please mark with an X where you were positioned on North Street. And North Street is a one-way street, is that correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. What's the direction of travel if you could uh, mark it in a spot not near where we're going to need to point out other yeah. things? <laughs> yeah, so this is okay. the one-way. Okay, perfect. And uh, what about Barstow Street? Is that uh, one-way or two-way, if you know? I believe it's a two-way. Okay. Yeah. It, um, did you stop at that intersection, sir? There's, that's a controlled intersection? Yes, uh, we were stopped at the red light. Okay. And you were in that uh, left-hand lane. It's two-lane street there? Uh, three lanes, maybe? Two or three. There might be, it looks like there's a turn lane there. So. Okay. And uh, so you're stopped at the lane closest to the gas station? That's correct. And what happened as you're sitting there, sir? Uh, so uh, about the same time as we were coming up uh, to stop at the stoplight, uh, there was a vehicle that, would, uh, that made a left from Barstow onto the wrong way, to go to the wrong way on North Street, uh, and stopped right up against uh, our vehicle. So. Okay, could you just draw the travel, the, the path of travel that you just described, please? Yeah. What kind of vehicle was this, sir? Uh, it was a red SUV, kind of an older model. So. Do you know uh, maker model specifically, or not um, really? At the time, no. No, okay. I, I wouldn't be able to say, just a red SUV, so. Okay. And you've already indicated that's the wrong way to be going on North Street. Correct. Yeah. What did you do when you saw this red SUV turning the wrong way into your path of travel? Uh, we, we kind of approached that stop line at the same time. Uh, and so uh, we were really uh, with the other vehicle hood to hood. Uh, and again, my wife and two kids are in the car. Uh, and the driver of the other vehicle kind of put up their hands, you know, I could see through the two windshields uh, that the other driver put up their hands uh, and was kind of uh, gesturing wildly, like, uh, again, I don't know if mouthing is the right word, but kind of frantically, uh, it seemed upset at us uh, that we were, you know, either going the wrong way or, uh, so I kind of did the same thing, uh, just put my, put my hands up and just kind of was confused because uh, we were coming up to a stoplight and then a car like uh, had approached us uh, and was, was hood to hood. Okay. Did you stay parked hood to hood or what happened? Uh, so the, the person in the other vehicle kind of uh, made mention with like a knife hand to his right, my left, uh, to, go in, to, to go in maybe towards the gas station. He was kind of pointing uh, to go into the, to the driveway of the, of the gas station. Uh, so I looked in my rearview mirror. There was no one parked behind me at the time. Uh, and other than that vehicle having to maybe back back up into the intersection, I could see that uh, they were motioning to go into the driveway of the of the gas station. Okay. Is can you point out the driveway, please, for the jury? Uh, yeah. It's just it's just an open open driveway here. Okay. Um, so I uh, put the car in reverse, backed up maybe five feet, uh, and then the the vehicle drove into the 
uh, into the gas station parking lot. Do you know who was driving that car? Um, again, windshield to windshield, we were you know somewhat able to identify you know basic features, uh, but when the car drove into the parking lot, uh, it kind of stopped, positioned itself at an angle, and the driver rolled down the window. Okay. Um, should I draw where they stopped? Sure. So the vehicle drove in and kind of stopped on a diagonal like this. All right. Uh, and you're still stopped at the stoplight? Correct. There? Still stopped at the stoplight. Okay. Uh, so the other driver rolled down the window uh, of their vehicle. I just, as a reaction, also rolled down the window of my, I don't, I don't know why, it's just a reaction of, uh, so the, the other driver rolled down their window uh, maybe halfway uh, and stuck his head out and kind of looked back. Uh, and he, he said, you know, why didn't you get out of the way? And I'm trying to get gas. And I said, well, it's a one way. Okay. You're going the wrong way down the runway. Well, I'm telling you, I need to get gas. And I go, oh, okay, man. And then it was, it was a green light and then we proceeded, so. Okay. Do you think you can identify the driver of that red SUV? Um, yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Do you see that person present in this courtroom here? I, I do, yeah. Your Honor, I'm gonna ask that Mr. Brooks be instructed to remove his mask temporarily. Mr. Brooks, you're instructed to take off your mask temporarily and look up, please. Thank you. So at the time, it was a lot more of dark facial hair features and longer hair as well. So because okay. uh, again, I would have saw uh, through the windshield once, but then also with the window rolled down, kind of looking back. So maybe just like the the forehead and then the long, you know, mass of hair. Sure. So different than he looks today with kind of a clean shaven or very short hairstyle. Yes, ma'am scruff or um, stubble on his chin? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but you do think it was Daryl Brooks that was driving that car based on seeing him in court here today? I do, ma'am. Okay. Did you um, continue on to the parade, sir? Uh, yes, we did, ma'am. And where did you and your family watch the parade? Uh, we were on, literally on Broadway Street. Uh, so that was one of the streets that intersects at the five points, uh, intersects Main Street. Uh, and so it was really windy, so we wanted to kind of face away from the wind with the kids, so we were sitting on Broadway. Okay. I'm sorry, I want to back up one step before I leave the gas station. Did it appear to you as though Mr. Brooks was alone in the car? Uh, yes, it did. You only saw one person in that car? That's correct. At that The objection is overruled. His answer may stand. Did you see any black female subjects walking in the area during this time? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay, now let's go back to the parade. You said you were near the five points? Yes, ma'am. And you were kind of positioned in an uh, area of try to get out of the wind, right? Uh, not out of the wind, but with our backs to the wind. Yes, okay. It was very windy that night, right? Yes. Objection irrelevant. Overruled. Did you see a red SUV go through the parade as you were watching it, sir? Yes, ma'am. What do you remember seeing, sir? Uh, it was from our left. Uh, it approached to, to right. Um, the direct uh, view in front of us, there were no uh, floats or part parade participants. It was kind of a, a gap in the parade uh, entries. Okay. Um, and so uh, so the, the vehicle approached uh, from our left. Uh, there was a somebody that flew through the air and then it exited uh, to the right of our perspective uh, and that's all we saw. So because we were a little bit maybe a row or two back from the front of the parade, um, we didn't have a long view of it coming and it leaving. It was kind of an uh, enter the frame of reference and then exit pretty quickly. Okay, but you did unfortunately see a person flying through the air? Yes, ma'am. Could you tell anything about the person as far as what group or unit they were with, if you know. If you don't know, that's okay. No, it was just dark clothing. Okay. The objection is overruled. His answer may stand. At that point, um, sir, um, near that five points intersection, did you hear the horn of the SUV honking as it came through that intersection? No, ma'am. Okay. What did you do next? Uh, we folded up our two kids in the chair, in the, in the folding parade, you know, lawn chair, uh, and then uh, got them back to, to the vehicle pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, and then uh, my wife uh, went to drive the kids home, and then I went back to help out with the craziness. So. Okay. 
why'd you go back to help? Um, it was just I don't, a reaction. I think I'll give credit to my wife. She handed me a couple diapers and a bottle of water and said, you know, you got to go back. So uh, we were right there. Okay. Uh, so we went back. And, and again, you have some limited um, first aid training or perhaps more than basic um, training. You you're, uh, have some good knowledge from your service in the armed. Uh, Mr. Brooks may have some questions. Mr. Brooks. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Yep. Thank you, Ms. Basie. Could I please ask the clerk to make a screenshot and uh, mark it as 1D and then I would uh, move to admit. 7P. Should be right? Yes. Actually, it will be 7A. Thank you. So uh, that will be marked as, as 7A. Mr. Brooks, any position on that? Yeah, I object to the relevancy of it. This, this was on the screen right now. <laughs> We talking about this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't see the relevance of this. Um, your obje objection is noted. It's overruled. Uh, the court receives Exhibit Seven A. Do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. And your, uh, do you have a, writ a written statement and? The statement that you gave to Officer Barron, would that be fair to say? I don't remember the name of the officer that took my statement. Would it be fair to say that you uh, were interviewed by an officer, a female officer? Yes. And would it also be fair that you have uh, you gave a written statement to that same officer? I think I signed the, the statement that she wrote. So be fair to say that uh, the officer wrote down what you told her? Yes. And do you remember the date that that uh, interview took place? Um, a couple days after uh, the parade incident. Any reason why it wouldn't have been the same day as the parade? Um, I would assume that they were rendering aid to the victims of the, the incident, and it took a while to get back to anybody that had called in with any altercations or, not altercations, but interactions. Would you, do you recall um, stating in this interview that you saw the news and a picture of the male driving the said SUV? Uh, I believe in the statement I said that I wanted to provide uh, a description of who I had the interaction with before I saw any picture of anybody uh, on the news. So you never stated that since the incident and before the statement that you saw the news and the picture of the mail? I, I guess I don't understand the question. In your uh, statement that the officer wrote down. Well, let me let me back up. Did you see a picture of the alleged defendant on the news? Yes, but not before I provided the description to the officer. So the description that you gave, would that be the same officer that did the interview? Um, I called the evening of the incident. I called the non-emergency line uh, and provided the description at maybe 1030 that evening, evening of the event, uh, and then provided the same description to the officer you know, a few days later. Um, do you recall why you called the non-emergency line for something that would have been so big that it should have been an emergency call? Objection, argumentative. Sustained. Please rephrase the question, Mr. Brooks. Any reason why you would call the non-emergency line? Um, yeah, a um, someone going down a wrong way on a one-way street uh, a few minutes before the parade uh, didn't seem like an emergency compared to what had happened at the parade. So, would it be fair to say that 
you were then reporting someone going down the wrong way, trying to get into the gas station at that time? At, at what time? At the time that you called the non-emergency number. I wanted to report that I had seen someone in a red SUV going the wrong way down a one-way before the parade, um, and the possibility that it was connected to the red SUV that I had seen drive through the parade. So that non-emergency um, report, as you state, would have been to make a possible connection between the two incidents? I was just reporting what I had seen. So at that time, would it be fair to say you, was, you weren't sure if there was a connection? Um, I would say that I had a red SUV five feet from my hood, and then I saw a red SUV drive through the parade and wanted to, you know, notify the police that I had seen that. So at the time, were you sure that there was a connection? Pretty sure, yes. And what would have made you pretty sure? Uh, the, the color of the SUV, uh, the approximate age of the, of the SUV, um, the, the timing between the 20 minutes of where I was in Waukesha to the 20, 25 minutes later that I had seen the red SUV go through the parade. Um, would it be fair to say that you just described the, uh, the SUV that made the wrong turn going into the gas station as a, a older model? I think that was your correct words, is that fair? Yes. Is there any reason why you wouldn't be able to make the connection between the older model SUV that you saw going into the gas station and the one that you saw in the parade? Um, no, they were they were similar age. I guess older subjective. I mean, it was a similar age, the one I saw before the parade and the one I saw during the parade. So it'd be fair to say that you weren't exactly sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure they were the same vehicle. Do you recall in your um, statement saying that you were 95% sure? That sounds right, yes, 95%. I would give that same percentage, yes. Why not? Why would you not be a hundred percent sure if you say that you believe that they were the same vehicle? Objection, argumentative, sustained. Please rephrase the question, Mr. Brooks. I guess I'll say like, what, what was, what put any doubt in your head that they weren't the same vehicle? Uh, I wasn't able to see the driver of the person going through the parade because uh, it was moving so fast. Uh, so I guess there's a, a very, very small chance that the red SUV uh, I saw beforehand was happened to be uh, a similar year, make, and model and color of the SUV that I saw go through the parade. So you weren't exactly sure who was driving the SUV in the parade? Correct. Do you recall stating in do you recall in the statement that the officer wrote down? Do you recall telling the officer that was writing the report that you were 95% sure the male you saw prior to the parade at the gas station was the one driving through the parade route? Um as far as not, I would, would not be able to identify who was driving through the parade route because the vehicle is moving too fast. Um, 
as far as not, I would, would not be able to identify who was driving through the parade route because the vehicle was moving too fast. Do you recall saying that his voice was the same? Uh, yes. Uh, so I could. So when the interview, the second interview had taken place, um, again, I wanted to provide the description to the officer, the visual description the night of. Um, but just as I did now, I'm 95% sure that the interaction that I had uh, prior to the parade was, was with you. Well, who do you refer to when you say you? Uh, whatever your name is. So you don't, you don't know the alleged defendant's name? I do, yeah. Would it be would it be safe to assume that if you couldn't see who was driving the SUV in the parade route, that you also couldn't identify was if it was the same voice? The voice has nothing to do with the the, the driver of the vehicle driving the parade. Again, I it was moving too quickly. I wasn't able to identify the driver when I saw the vehicle going through the parade. So would it be safe to assume that you? got the description from the news and picture of the person that you seen on the news? The, the person and the voice uh, that I saw on the news matched who I interacted with prior to the parade. But just so we're clear for the record, there was no way you saw who was driving the vehicle in the parade route? Correct. Going back to the, the interacting interaction at the uh, gas station, do you recall uh, telling the interviewing officer that the driver of that vehicle uh, rode down the window to say, I'm almost out of gas? Yes. Do you recall um, backing your vehicle up to let the driver of that car into the gas station? Yes. Do you remember how far you backed up? Five feet. Do you remember telling the reporting officer who was writing down your statement that it was 10 feet? Five to 10 feet. Was it, was it five feet or 10 feet? It was enough to let the, the vehicle into the, the gas station. So would it be safe to say that you don't recall? It would be safe to say it's between five and 10 feet. After your uh, initial non-emergency uh, call, it was the, the night of the parade that you made the, the non-emergency call, correct? Yes. Do you recall how long after that you were then interviewed by law enforcement? A few days. Did you try to attempt to call and report again? Yes, I think so. Uh, I think I'd, I'd called again uh, maybe a day or two later uh, just because, again, it was when I first called the night of, uh, you know, they seemed to be pretty, pretty busy. Uh, so I called a, a day or two later uh, just to, you know, make sure that anybody had taken down the statement that I had made the night of. Uh, and then it was, you know, a, a couple days later that the, the officer had came out to interview me. 
would it be fair to state that at that time you were still uh, seeking to report what had happened at the gas station? That's correct. So you weren't seeking to report any connection between the gas station incident and what you saw in the parade route? Objection. Asked and answered. Um, overruled. He may answer. Uh, I was calling to report what I had seen uh, before the parade. And the second reporting was before you actually were interviewed, correct? Just, just so we're clear for the record. What do you mean by the second reporting? Uh, the second time that you called to make a report about the gas station incident, that was before you ultimately were interviewed by law enforcement. Uh, that's correct. The second call was just to make sure that they still had my name and uh, I didn't really file a formal report that second time. It was just a call to see that they still had my name and contact info and they had said that an officer would be out uh, eventually to, to interview. At that time, when you were when you called to make sure that they still had your name on file or you know your report about the gas station incident at that time had you made any connection to that incident and what you saw at the parade Your Honor, i'm going to object we've been through this uh sustained it's been asked and answered mr brooks i draw your attention once again to 906 11. Noted. Next topic, please. Noted. And uh, were you were you subpoenaed by the state of Wisconsin to testify here today? I was either the state or the county. I received a letter from the county. Did they identify as the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Irrelevant. Sustained. Do you see the state of Wisconsin in the courtroom today? Objection, Your Honor. Vague. Sustained. To the best of your knowledge, do you know if the state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Irrelevant. Sustained. Have you ever had any action, any, any interaction with the state of Wisconsin? Objection, irrelevant, sustained. Ever had a phone conversation with the state of Wisconsin? Objection, irrelevant, sustained. Do you even know the state of Wisconsin? Same objection, sustained. And you, New topic, or I'll stop the cross examination under 906.11. One second. Did you? Um, do you recall how, how long approximately you were stopped at the red light during the gas station incident? A minute or two. Did you ever see the vehicle that went into the gas station actually get gas? Uh, when we turned left onto Barstow, uh, I noticed that the vehicle didn't stop for gas and was going to either exit to go back on north, but it, it didn't stop at a... Uh, at a gas pump. Did you see the vehicle pull off from the gas station or was it just kind of stationary parked? I, I can't say to what the vehicle did because I was already at that point out of view. I just know that it had not gone to one of the gas pumps. No further questions. Can you redirect? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. State may call its next witness, please. Thank you, the state calls Holly Berg.
Can we have Ms. Bird? Good afternoon. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. It is to my right upper riser. When you get there, please raise your right hand. Remain standing, raise your right hand, and I sent my clerk on an errand, so I will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. Have a seat, please. When you are seated, the first thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each, please. Holly Berg, H-O-L-L-Y-B-E-R-G. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Ms. Berg, thank you for your appearance here this afternoon. I'd like to ask you about the events of November 21, 2021, okay? okay. Do you remember that afternoon, uh, 3, 34 o'clock in the afternoon, what you were doing? Yes. What was that? I was dropping my boyfriend's daughter, who was five at the time, at um, with her dance company on White Rock Avenue at their staging area okay. um, to get ready for the parade. So your boyfriend's daughter was going to participate in the parade? Yes. Okay. And you had to drop her off on White Rock? Mm hmm Okay. Was that a yes? Yes. Thank you. And then... My job to make sure the record's clear, so okay. if you nod your head or say, um, okay. I'll clarify. It's okay. People do it all the time. And after you dropped her off, were you planning to attend the parade then? Yes. And where were you planning to watch the parade from? Earlier that morning, we went and put our chairs and blankets on a spot on Main and Maple right on the corner. Okay. And do you know if you were on the north side of the street or the south side of the street? South side. South side of the street. And do you know any businesses that were nearby that you can remember? Yeah, we were right across from Main Street Bar and Grill. Okay. Mainstream. Okay. Mainstream Bar and yes. Grill? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, as you were traveling uh, to... to to the parade after dropping off your uh, boyfriend's daughter. Did you travel along North Street? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask uh, to display exhibit number seven, which has already been admitted, Your Honor. Permission to public exhibit seven is granted. All right. So it's up on the big screens. It's also on the monitor in front of you. Okay. And that's actually a touch. I was right here in the second lane. I mean, it's probably one lane too close. I drew the X. Okay. We can clear it, and she can do it again if it's not accurate. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not the So I was right here in the, okay. oh my gosh. In the center lane. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on, I wonder if she... Uh, you may have clicked the arrow, which is okay. There's multiple ways to annotate. Um, so try it again and see what comes up. There we, there we go. go. Okay. And uh, as you approach that intersection, do you remember if you had to stop for the stoplight there? Yes, it had just turned red. Okay. Did you see any cars around you on North Street? Yes, there was a car to my left. I think it was silver. Um, and I think there was a car on my right. Okay. And uh, the car on your left then would be in the lane closest to the gas station, correct? Correct, right at the corner. Okay, there is a gas station right there, that big box in the middle yes. of the street. Okay. What do you remember happening as you sat there at the stoplight? So I stopped at the stoplight, um, and I immediately saw a red SUV come from down the hill on Barstow, um, and it turned into North Street, to go into the gas station. However, it turned on a one-way street, um, and it was like head-to-head -head with the car next to me okay. um, in the first lane. And so I was right next to that, to the silver car. Sure. And How about, could you draw that for us on the, on the map the, yeah. the best you can, please? Yep, so it came down here and into this first lane right here. Okay. And that's where the silver car was parked, yeah. or stopped, I should say. Yes, and there is a driveway to the gas station right here. Okay. And 
the silver car was blocking that driveway because it's an exit, not an enter. Okay. And so um, you saw the, the SUV go kind of hood to hood or head to head, you yes. said, with the silver car. Yeah. And, and, I, I, and I was looking and I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy is coming onto our, and trying to get onto our one-way street. And I saw a bunch of arm flailing um, from- By who? I think both vehicles um, because presumably the red car, the red SUV is mad that the silver car is blocking to get into the gas station. The silver car is like, I'm not doing anything wrong. So um, they were both kind of upset. And then I noticed the silver car backed up to allow the red SUV to get into the gas station. Okay. Could you see into the red SUV and see the driver of that vehicle? When I was, um, before it had entered the gas, before silver car backed up and red SUV went into the driveway, um, I could just see outline. Okay. However, after the SUV pulled in, it, he stopped immediately as soon as he got into the driveway mm -hmm. and stuck his head out and was still doing this, like yelling at the silver car. Gesturing and yes. yelling. Could you hear what was being said? No, I had my window up. You had your window up, okay. But you could, it, it appeared he was yelling. Yes. Did he appear angry to you? Irritated. Okay. And uh, could you tell how many people were in that red SUV at that point? Or did you see anybody other than the driver? I did not see anybody else. Okay. Do you think you can identify the driver of that red SUV? Yes. Is that person present in the courtroom here today? Yes. All right, I'm gonna ask Mr. Brooks to remove his mask, Your Honor, for identification by this witness. Mr. Brooks, thank you. Record to reflect, he took his mask down. Yes. Is that the driver of the red SUV you just described for us? Yes. Okay. Now, did you um, eventually go on to the parade? Yes, so I, so right after, you know, five seconds after the SUV got in and stuck his head out, then the light turned green and I went and parked my car okay. um, and then met, met with my family. So right after, you know, five seconds after the SUV got in and stuck his head out, then the light turned green and I went and parked my car okay. um, and then met, met with my family at okay. the location. Okay. And did you see a red SUV on the parade route? Yes, about 30 minutes into um, getting there. Okay. So I'm just going to slow down here a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. You're doing a great job. Thank you. I just want to ask you now, as you're standing there at the parade, <coughs> what do you remember about the first time you saw that red SUV? So at first, um, so a group had just passed us. Um, I believe it was the Catholic community group. and then there was a large gap and so I looked to see you know what's next okay and saw the a, a red SUV which I originally thought was part of the parade um, in the far right lane of Main Street but it was going really fast and I said to myself why is this going so fast and then it clicked as soon as it switched over to the far left lane okay. um, and then into the group of people right in front of me. And that will be the Catholic community group? I do, believe, I do believe so. Did you see the red SUV strike any people in the Catholic community group? Several. Can you estimate how many? At least 15. Okay. And did, um, I'm sorry to ask it this way, but did you see anybody like actually fly or roll or tumble? Yeah, so originally it was, we heard sounds like thuds and then it was in the air um, like bowling pins. Okay. Did you get a look at the driver of the vehicle as it went through the parade? Yeah. Um, when I had just said it veered to the left and then struck the group of people, mm -hmm. It was about probably six or seven feet from where I was standing. Okay. And I saw directly through the driver's window. What did you see? I saw a man focused on the group ahead of him. 
Is that Daryl Brooks that you saw? Yes. And as soon as that happened, about 10 seconds after, I froze and I said to my mom who was with me, I, saw, I just saw that guy at the gas station. And it clicked that it was the same person. You remember exactly that it was the same person? Yes. Okay. You described hearing some noises that you uh, described as thuds, is that right? Yes. What do you think that noise was? Hitting a large group of people with a vehicle. Okay. Did you hear uh, Mr. Brooks honking the horn on the vehicle at all? No. Um, you described some driving maneuvers where you saw him going from side to side of the road, is that correct? Yeah, I, I saw it coming up Main Street in the far right lane, and then, and I was in the far left, uh, on the sidewalk of the okay. far left, and it was then in the far left lane. Okay. Um, were you able to estimate the speed of the vehicle at that time? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Would you be able to estimate the speed? Um, to the best of my knowledge, I would say 20 miles per hour, perhaps. Okay. Um, did you ever see the vehicle? As many bodies as it did. Um, I remember the brake lights, but okay. then it continued. Did you actually see the vehicle drive over people? Um, I saw it hit the group and people fly and then there was just chaos in the street. Okay. Had your um, boyfriend's daughter already gone through? No, she had not. Okay. So she was back waiting to join the parade or you did we didn't you know, know where she was? at the time no so as soon as it happened my boyfriend leaped up to go help people and i grabbed him i said no go find her so okay. then he took off and had to go find her down five blocks okay all right thank you ma'am i don't have any other questions for you mr brooks do you have any cross exam for this witness i do uh, first of all good afternoon You stated that you saw uh, brake lights. Would that be fair to say? Mm-hmm. Was that a yes? Yes. Thank you. Would it be fair to say you would only see brake lights from a vehicle if it was attempting to stop? Or slow? So, just saw so clear on that you will see brake lights on a vehicle that is attempting to slow down or stop sure and you stated that um, you can estimate the speed of the vehicle I estimated 20 miles per hour And would you characterize that as extremely fast? For, yes, for the parade, yes. And how, how did you come to the conclusion of the speed? with how quickly it went from point A to point B of in my range of sight. Uh, going back to the gas station uh, incident, um, you were, I, I would, I guess I would need to see the map again. We you still were, have that available? The map? 
we still have the map with the markings available up, or was it cleared after we captured it? I didn't clear it. Yeah, okay. Can we please um, save that as 7B, please, Your Honor? It will be saved as 7B. <clears throat> and admitted. Any position on that, Mr. Brooks? Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't see the relevancy of the map. It's directly related to our testimony, sir. It's relevant. Your objection is noted. So it's overruled. Exhibit 7B is received. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't see the relevancy of the map. It's directly related to our testimony, sir. It's relevant. Your objection is noted. So it's overruled. Exhibit 7B is received. Where were you positioned again at the stoplight? I was in the front row in the middle lane. Do you remember if uh, it was a car to your right? I think there was a car to my right. Do you recall if the uh, vehicle you saw going into the gas station had any tinted windows? I do not. And you stated that you were pretty sure it was only one occupant of that vehicle? Yes, that's all I could see. With all you can see, or are you sure that it was only one occupant? I could see one person. So it'd be fair to say you, you couldn't see any other seats in the vehicle? I saw one person when it was head to head with the vehicle next to me, the one with the arms in the air, and then I saw one person as he stuck his head out the window once he pulled in. Could you see the passenger seat? I could not. From could that you, point. Could you see the back seats? No. Are we done with the map? I'd like to turn oh, it over. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, do you recall uh, who subpoenaed you here to testify? Yes. You stated for the record? Yes, I said. Oh, you, the state of Wisconsin district attorney. Do you see the state of Wisconsin president in the courtroom today? Objection, irrelevant. Sustained. Mr. Brooks, move on. Under 90611, I've sustained all of the objections related to this line of questioning. It's not relevant. Next topic, or I will find that the cross-examination by you is done. So you're, you're sustaining every question pertaining to that part of questioning, or is it for yes. every testimony? Or it's on that topic, so you may continue if you choose another topic. Have you ever seen the plaintiff state of Wisconsin before? All right, pursuant to 906.11, um, judge controls the order and mode of interrogation that these questions uh, violate sub one and Mr. Brooks will not be able to ask any further questions of this witness. Does the state have any redirect? No redirect, Your Honor. All right, thank you. You may step down. Did, Mr. Was Brooks, violated. we're not going to address that right now. Um, I think this will be a good time to take our afternoon break. Uh, so we'll be, um, I need to address a couple things with the parties, but for, as far as the jurors are concerned, uh, about 15 minutes for the afternoon break, give or take. I'll rise for the jurors, please.
has passed three notes to the court. Um, I review them as they come in. At times, I put no response needed by the court. I initial it, date it, put the time. They, these will be uploaded into the file at some point. Um, there was one particular request I do want to take up by Mr. Brooks, and that is at 1.11 p.m. he sent a note to the court indicating, I'm very emotional right now. Can I go to the other court? I responded to that at 1.20 p.m. and I said the court will address this at the next break. Clerk advised to provide a copy of this response to the parties forthwith. Um, I believe she may have provided even the other note, a copy of the other note in my response at that time, but at a minimum I know my response was copied and provided to the parties. Um, I did note that I saw Mr. Brooks uh, reviewing the papers. They were put on the corner of his table. I wrote down the time. It's not at my fingertips. I'll look for that. But in any event, I did want to address that with you, Mr. Brooks. Um, you've been in the courtroom. You've been meaningfully participating. Um, are you asking to go to the other courtroom? Um, we went back on the record. Uh, I, I was very emotional at that time. Um, still very emotional, but I'm, I'm attempting as best I can to hold it together. Um, that does lead me to, since we are addressing certain things outside the... Well, I'm addressing this first, sir. Are you making a request to go to the other I'm not courtroom? making any requests at this time. Like I just stated, I'm trying my best to hold everything together considering how this day has been. I can't expect anybody else to know what's inside my head to know what I'm going through right now, but yeah, we'll just leave that there. All right, thank you. That is noted for the record. At some point, sir, after I admitted Exhibit 6, you raised an objection. I'm not, I told you I would allow you to raise that outside the presence of the jury. Um, now is your opportunity to do that. And with which one would you be referring to? Exhibit 6, sir. Or the, uh, the video? We've seen multiple videos, but Vi yes, Exhibit 6 is a video, sir. Um, I think it's, it's very clear what I was referring to in that video. The, the interview portion of the officer with the three individuals has language in it that you made a ruling about pertaining to a whole different entire which part of the video sir the interview part i'm gonna say it again as i've already said it clearly enough the interview part between the officer and the three individuals and what specifically are you referring to what statement sir i need some specificity do you need it played do you need it played mr brooks you're the one making the objection please make your uh, offer of proof so i can rule on it the offer of proof is that there's language said by Erica Patterson in that interview that can be audible referring to another situation in another county. You made a ruling on that, that that would not be admitted into evidence. So at the very least, that portion of the video that you've already admitted into evidence should be removed or the whole video should be struck and removed from the record. And I'm saying that because of the ruling that you made, the judicial determination that you made, Your Honor. Let me turn to the state. Uh, Attorney Opper, I don't specifically recall. If, we need to, if I need to review it on a break, maybe I will. But do you have any idea what this is referring to? I do not, Your Honor. I did not hear anything in that recording that would violate your previous orders. I object to that. Um, it's very clear if the video was played that you can hear language said in that portion of the video that you clearly ruled on. 
I'll review it at a later point in time. Uh, the state will need to uh, just file that clip on a flash drive so I can uh, review that in chambers. Um, from my perspective, even if there were to be something, it was not offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Um, this was to uh, provide an, uh, an account of the, uh, what the officer was experiencing, um, but I'll review it. Um, if there is something in there, um, I certainly can. It doesn't change the fact that the video itself is admissible. It might have an impact on whether it's played again for the jury, at least at that particular point. Um, but again, I didn't personally catch that, but there was a lot going on in that video at that time, a lot of audio. There's clearly an addition to the audio from the squad. You can hear the radio, so I will need to review it again. Mr. Brooks, I'd appreciate if you not roll your eyes at me. Um, there was a lot going on in that video. Um, I don't think anyone in this courtroom would disagree with me. What I'm telling you, I'm giving you the opportunity to raise the issue since you essentially didn't, well, let me state it this way. You raised it when you thought it was appropriate. I told you I'd take it up outside the presence of the jury. That's what I'm giving you the opportunity to do. What I'm telling you is I'm not gonna make a ruling specifically because I need to watch the video. And so I don't think that's something you should be rolling your eyes at. That's proper for this court. I would. It would be uh, something that if I were to just give my ruling right now, it would be, it, it would be something that someone could look at later on and say, well, you didn't, you just admitted on the record, you didn't hear it yourself. So what I'm telling you, sir, is I'm gonna take the time, not now during the trial, but on a break when I can look at it in chambers and keep a careful ear out for what you said, and then I'll come back and make my ruling. So that's giving deference to your request so I don't think it warrants you rolling your eyes at me. I wasn't rolling my eyes to you about so that. So with I that, was, we're on recess. 15 re minutes, everyone. The court's stepping Your Honor.
Please be seated. We are back on the record. Mr. Brooks, you have incredible hearing because you are right. At approximately 258 to 259 in that video, there is, I can hear Erica Patterson saying that I get into an argument or I argue with my baby daddy all the time and he previously ran over my foot. So I'm going to take the request under advisement. At this point, I'm inclined to strike this exhibit from the state's case. I'm going to give the parties over the weekend to file any written requests regarding it or further authority, and I'll address it uh, first thing Monday morning. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'm not interrupting you. No, go ahead. Um, did you make a, a ruling on the, um, the filing for the demand of verified statement of particulars by affidavit? Mr. Brooks, I'm uh, not going to address that. It is an argument that's without merit. I'm summarily denying it yet again. We're going to bring the jury back out, okay? We're going to continue with testimony. Does the state have the next witness available? We do, Your Honor. Your objection is noted for the record. We're continuing, Mr. Brooks. Thank you. I'm aware of that, Your Honor. I was just trying to make sure I didn't interrupt you while you were saying something. So will State's you be, next witness, please. Will you be proving the subject matter? We need the jury, Your Honor. Oh, we do. <laughs> oh, sometimes I get a little ahead of myself. Let's bring the jury out. Your Honor, I make a motion to dismiss this case for lack of personal and subject matter jurisdiction. And I'd like to state that for the record. Your you statement have, is noted. You have not proven subject matter jurisdiction yet, Your Honor. Are you making the judicial Can determination? Can I direct your attention to the Barnaby decision, Mr. Brooks? Is that a judicial determination? The, the record should reflect in that I got no answer. All right, thank you everyone. Please be seated. State may call its next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The state calls Detective Casey. All right, Detective Casey, if you would please take the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes. Thank you, please be seated. Would you please state your first and last names for the record and spell each? Thomas Casey, T-H-O-M-A-S, Casey, C-A-S-E-Y. Thank you, go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, Detective Casey, what is your current employment? I'm employed by the City of Waukesha Police Department. And what is your rank? I'm a detective. How long have you worked in law enforcement? Over 25 years. And, uh, directing your attention to the date of November 21, 2021, were you on duty that day, sir? Yes, I was. In what capacity? Um, well, my rank was detective, but I was assigned to uh, the Christmas parade as traffic control. Okay. Just helping out? Just helping out. All right. And uh, have you patrolled uh, the Christmas parade in the past, sir? Uh, yes, I have for many years. Okay. And the parade's always held on Main Street in downtown Waukesha, is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, about what time did you uh, report to the parade route? <clears throat> uh, that day, myself and three other people started at 1 p.m. And where'd you go? Uh, my position was on White Rock Avenue and East Main Street. Okay. 
and yeah. uh, you're, as a detective, you typically dress in uh, plain clothes, is that correct? Typically. That day, yeah. were you in plain clothes or a police uniform? I was in a police uniform. Could you describe that for the jury, please? I had a jacket on that had shoulder patches on each side. I had a hat that had said police on the top of it, and I had a neon vest on that said police on the front and back of it. Were you driving a squad car? I had an unmarked squad with me, and I also had a marked Ford Explorer with me. And uh, the unmarked squad, are there any red and blue emergency lights on that squad? Sir? Yes, there are. In more than one location? Yes, the front, rears, and then the sides. Okay. Um, at your post there on White Rock and Main Street, did you have your unmarked squad parked there? Yes, I did. And then there was also a marked squad parked there? Correct. Were the red and blue lights activated on those squads? Yes, they were. What was the purpose in activating the red and blue lights? Uh, to notify. Unmarked squad parked there? Yes, I did. And then there was also a marked squad parked there? Correct. Were the red and blue lights activated on those squads? Yes, they were. What was the purpose in activating the red and blue lights? Uh, to notify traffic um, that the road was closed down, uh, make it easier to see. Okay. And um, you said you reported for duty at 1 p.m.? Yes. And about what time was it when you actually went down to the parade route and, and shut down that intersection? Right when I got there at 1 p.m. Okay. So the, that area was closed since 1 p.m. that afternoon? Correct. So the, the area on White Rock Avenue between Niagara and Main Street is the staging area for the parade floats when they come in. So they closed that area about three hours earlier before the parade starts. I see. What was the weather like that day? Uh, it was very cold and windy out. What time was the parade supposed to start? Uh, 4 p.m. And do you know about how many units were participating in the parade? Uh, there were 67 units that were assigned that day. And all of them are told to report to the staging area to line up before they get onto the parade route, is that right? Correct, the roadway is closed in my position and they're all supposed to enter from the north and come south. Okay. Uh, how many spectators would you estimate were present at the parade? Oh, there had to be at least 5,000 people there. Were there. Um, the parade route is about uh, six tenths of a mile long. The sidewalks were packed. There were some people in the roadway. So we estimate that there was probably at least 5,000 people watching the parade that day. Okay. And um, you're obviously aware, sir, that uh, there was a tragic event that occurred as the parade was underway, correct? Correct. Do you know of the 67 units that you told us about? How many units were impacted directly by uh, the conduct of Mr. Daryl Brooks? Uh, there was eight units that all had people that were injured okay. during the parade. And you know which units those are, or which groups those are? Yes, I do. If I were to show you video of those groups uh, early in the parade route before the SUV goes through, would you be able to identify those groups for us and tell us a little bit about each one? Certainly. All right. Um, just to be clear, sir, um, <coughs> well, if we could please put up exhibit one. It's the easiest way to ask my question. Exhibit one will be published. I would quickly like to object to being called that name. I did not recognize the name that the prosecutor used. Your objection is noted, it's overruled. So, again, the, the, the direction of travel for the parade is what? which direction, sir? Uh, the parade starts in this area right here. Okay. This here is the staging area, and it travels this way, which is uh, southwesterly fashion, and then it proceeds this direction which is west. Okay, so the units that were struck first by the SUV were near the end of the parade, correct? Near the end or maybe the middle. There, were, the still, there were still some parades that haven't even started the parade around yet, and there were some that had already finished. Okay, and so um, 
<clears throat> well, we'll, we'll just um, play these videos, please, and I'm going to ask you again as we play them to identify the various groups that were impacted. So, Attorney Upper, any request as relates to the annotation? No, I don't think so, not at this time, Your Honor. We can let that one go. All right, Mr. Brooks, any request as it relates to the annotation? Uh, I don't understand what that, what is annotation. Next time, wait. Sure. The monitor, the touch screen made annotations, made marks. We've been capturing it. The, I, the state said they were not asking that an exhibit be made. Um, unfortunately, they're no longer on there. Um, so we won't have the specific markings. Would you have wanted those markings no. to be captured? Okay, because I would give this, I would give instructions to Detective Casey to redo them if you wanted. No. All right, then go ahead. All right, so I'm gonna ask, uh, we're gonna preview exhibit 10, please. Do you see the beginning of exhibit 10 on your screen, sir? No, I do not. <clears throat> it should be. Um, it might take a second or two. I have an image on there now. Okay. Do you recognize that image? Yes, I do. And do you know Exhibit 10 to be a video clip? Yes, I do. Uh, looking at it right now, do you recognize the group that is displayed on that first uh, First screenshot, I guess, from the video that's yeah, displayed. Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay, and what group do you see there, sir? Uh, the Catholic Communities of Waukesha. Okay. And uh, do you believe this uh, clip that we're about to show the jury will be a truthful and accurate representation of the parade units as they uh, entered the parade route? Objection, you're saying. Overrule. Yes, I do believe that they do. Okay. Uh, move to admit number 10 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Uh, for the record, how long is exhibit 10? It is uh, three minutes and 31 seconds, Your Honor. Any position by uh, uh, Mr. Brooks? Uh, Your objection is noted, it's overruled. Uh, permission, the exhibit. 10 is received, permission to publish is granted. Mr. Brooks, your objection is noted. It's overruled. I all, right. I'll answer this. I believe the evidence is relevant to the charges in this case. Detective Casey, before we begin playing the video, what do you see? Could you please describe for the jury and orient them to uh, what they're seeing at this point? So this would be the Catholic communities of Waukesha. They would be marching westbound on Main Street, which is at the early beginning of the parade. And the cross street there would be East Avenue, and the church behind them should be uh, St. Matthias Church. Okay. And did they have a banner in front of their group as they marched down the road? Yes, they do. Okay. To your knowledge, sir, and you've seen uh, many videos from this parade, correct? Correct. And you saw some of these units, at least as they entered the route, correct? Correct. Did the um, Catholic community of Waukesha, did the participants for that group wear any specific clothing or uniforms, to your knowledge? Uh, no, they do not. The objection is noted. It's overruled, and the answer may stand. And to your knowledge, did they walk in any sort of formation? It was just a random formation. Sometimes they changed a little bit as they were walking. Okay. Uh, please play. And now at about the 24 second mark, what's the next unit coming into the screen? The Dancing Grannies. Okay, and, and I, they had a banner? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and, and the woman on the left-hand side of the screen is Virginia Sorensen. 
on the left-hand side of the screen or the left-hand side of the street. Objection. That was not the question asked who the person was. Um, I'll sustain the objection. Um, the answer was non-responsive. I'll strike it. Next question. Jerry, sure. she'll just she'll disregard the last answer provided by Detective Kesey. All right. Actually, we're just going to play this, and we're, we won't identify any people at this point. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, sir, did the dancing grannies have a uniform? Yes, they did. Do you remember generally what it looked like? It was a blue dress. They had hats. Um, they had some lights around them. Okay. Uh, white tennis shoes. Okay. And did they march in a formation, to your knowledge? Yes, they did. Okay. Please play. What's that vehicle, sir? It's a support vehicle for the dancing grannies. All right, did you happen to see that? Uh... No, strike that. Um, all right, so that they had a banner in front and then a white, look like SUV type vehicle at the rear of their group? Yes. Okay, now that was uh, the 146 mark I, I paused <clears throat> and we will continue to play. If you could please pause at the 205 mark. Which, which unit is this, please? This would be Citizens Bank. And uh, did these participants have a uniform or something that would be recognizable? Uh, not really a uniform, but a couple of ladies got together and wore the same um, pants and um, jackets over the top and then some uh, Santa hats. Okay. And they have this float associated with their unit? Yes. Okay. Did they march in a formation, to your knowledge? No, just sort of random. They were handing out candy, walking around, and uh, no specific place. Okay. Play. Uh, do you know about how many uh, people are involved with this unit? Objection uh, irrelevant. Overruled. You may answer. I would estimate about 35 girls. Uh, younger age bearing. Okay. And again, they started with a banner um, in the front? Yes. Did they have a support vehicle involved as well? Yes, a uh, pickup truck that there were two people in the back of the bed which were resupplying the candy for the people that were marching. Okay. Did these girls have a certain uniform? Yes, they did. What do you remember about their uniform? Uh, black tights, black sweater, white tennis shoes, and they all had a headband on. Okay. That lit up. To your knowledge, did they march in formation? Uh, the, the girls in the front, there was four different groups of girls based on sort of their age and their ability. Um, the girls in the front had more of a formation than some of the tiny tots that were in the back. Okay. Play.
All right, that's the end of that clip. I'd like to um, show you another <coughs> clip that's been marked as state's exhibit number 11 so that we can continue with the uh, parade units, please. We'll preview it for you, sir. Objection, we need to grab it against it. Your objection is noted, it is overruled. And you may question the witness regarding the exhibit. Thank you. <coughs> would note for Mr. Brooks that in addition to being relevant to the charges, it goes it also goes to background and context. What do you mean by background? Background to the event. Events that led up to like detail all of the charges, the reason for why we're here. Detailed background. It's regarding the parade, sir. I don't understand, but okay. Don't understand. Your statements noted for the record. <clears throat> Having technical difficulties, Judge, trying to spin the uh, you can see that. video to get it upright. Going to plan B here.
up on my monitor and the witness monitor. <coughs> All right, thank you. Up. I appreciate everyone's patience. I apologize. Um, all right, sir, you now see uh, the front screen of, the, of State's Exhibit number 11, correct? Yes, I do. And it's upright? Correct. Okay. And uh, you have seen State's Exhibit number 11 before, correct? Yes, I have. Do you believe it's a Hold true? On. There's been an objection. Are you objecting to the question? Um, I'm objecting to is that the same video? I don't see the um, same person that was directly in the camera view when it was sideways. It looks like a totally different video. Sir, there, it's not been admitted yet. Uh, the state's laying a foundation for that. Um, and I'm gonna let them continue questioning. So, Detective Casey, you have seen State's Exhibit number 11 before, correct? Yes, I have. And you believe it's a true and accurate representation of the events of November 21, 2021? Objection. Yep. Uh, it's over, your objection is noted. It's overruled. Yes, I do. All right. Move for admission of number 11 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, any position on the admission of Exhibit yes, 11? Yes, I definitely object. This is not the same video that was just uh, attempted to be shown. This is a totally different video. Um, Mr. Brooks, your objection is noted. Um, there wasn't much testimony about whatever that prior exhibit was, and I'm going off of his testimony about seeing this particular video clip. There's the still image in front of him that he identified he previously reviewed, and it's accurate, true and accurate. Uh, so based on that, your objection is noted, but it is overruled. I'll receive exhibit 11. Permission to publish is granted. The last video then that didn't. The last video wasn't admitted, sir. There were technical issues. They moved on. Um, we're, we will continue. Go ahead. Okay. So again, please orient us, Detective Casey. So we are now a little bit further west on Main Street. Um, this is about maybe um, two blocks west of the last location. And the cross street it would be at is Northwest Barstow Street. Okay. And what unit is uh, shown on the screen at the moment? This would be the Waukesha Blazer support vehicle and then the baseball players come shortly behind it. Okay. And uh, to your knowledge, did this group walk in any certain formation? Uh, no, they didn't. They walked around. They were also handing out candy, just sort of walking around, mingling with the crowd and themselves. Okay. And uh, were some of the players wearing their baseball jerseys? Yes, they were. And uh, other individuals just had on like hats and coats and nothing discernible, correct? Objection, irrelevant. Everybody had on coats and hats. Um, your objection's noted, it's overruled. So most of the players had their jerseys on with their numbers on the back, but there was also some coaches that were marching with them and they just had regular jackets and hats that were on when they were walking. Okay, please play. <coughs> Be Barris Logistics. You can see the pickup truck that's pulling a float that has the Grinch on the back. Okay. Please play. And now at the 103 mark, we've paused it. What's the next unit coming into view? This would be the Waukesha South High School Marching Band. Go ahead.
And if you could pause, what's that unit right there in the middle? Well, there's the mascot first for the Lux Chest Health Band, and then directly behind that is the Remax Realty support vehicle. Okay. Is it easy to distinguish the Remax vehicle? Uh, yes, they had a big hot air balloon basket on the back, and they had a flame that was blowing out the top. That okay. was very noticeable. Okay. Please play. And we're going to stop it there at about the 215 mark. So that's the uh, the Remax group going through, correct, sir? That is correct. Okay. Are those the uh, eight units that were uh, most directly impacted by Mr. Brooks' actions on the parade route, sir? Yep. Yeah. They seem to be included. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Yes, they were. In addition to that, were, there were some spectators that were injured. Is that correct, sir? Correct. There's, I would say, three different groups of uh, people, spectators that were sitting on the side of the roadway that were also injured. Okay. At some point, did you, um, did you and other members of the Waukesha Police Department attempt to identify all the individuals who were injured as a result of Mr. Brooks' actions on the parade route? Objection, I do not consent to being called that name. Overruled. Yes, sir, we did. And about roughly how many people was that? There are over 60 people that were injured that we identified. Okay. Were you able through your investigation detective to determine where along the parade route each of these individuals were located at the time they were injured? Yes, we were. And were you able to map that information uh, so that we can present it to this jury? Yes. I'd like to um, please put up number 15 in preview mode. Detective, do you see State's Exhibit number 15 on the screen? Not yet. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Is it up? No. Okay. okay, please tell me when it is. It is up now. All right. <clears throat> Can you please identify State's Exhibit 15? Uh, this is a map that I put together that identifies the officers that were on the scene. Uh, certain locations of interest that people mentioned when they were uh, interviewed also identifies the victims and the deceased that um, died during the parade event is this an accurate summary of your investigation sir yes it is uh, per, uh, move to admit number 15 and permission to publish Mr. Brooks, any position? Your objection is noted. Uh, the exhibit is received subject to all of the other events laying the foundation for this are ultimately presented to this jury, but you may publish <coughs> as well. Thank you. All right. And Please, Ms. Gussie, if you could um, zoom in on the upper right-hand corner again. We'll start there again. All right, so first uh, in the upper right-hand corner, you've uh, designated where the location of White Rock School and the altercation with Ms. Erica Patterson that we had testimony about earlier, correct? Correct. And then moving down White Rock, we see the location where Sergeant Warner was, correct? Correct. 
And then we'll keep moving down, please. Okay, good. I see your name in the middle of the map, sir. Could you start at that spot and uh, describe what's in that area and then start working down the street towards <clears throat> Buckley? So my location, I had uh, two vehicles with me, an unmarked Ford Taurus and a marked uh, Ford Explorer. We had put the squad, in, the two squads in uh, plastic barricades diagonal so the parade traffic could continue on westbound and the vehicular traffic that was on East Main Street and Pleasant Street could make turns and so we wouldn't uh, obstruct traffic that much. Could you point, draw that path for us, what you're referring to? So the, the vehicles could continue this way without being stopped okay. or the opposite way. And then the flow of the parade came this way down to my location and continued westbound without being obstructed. Okay. I'm not asking for that to be captured, Your Honor. <clears throat> Let me ask Mr. Brooks if he's asking that the annotations be captured. Uh, those are already ruled that they wouldn't be. No, that was for that one particular. Yeah. We don't need it on this one. All right, then it won't be captured. Go ahead and clear. All right, sir, through your investigation, were you able to determine who was the first person struck by the defendant's vehicle? Yes, I was. And who was that? Nicole White. And she was with the Remax group? Yes. And where was she when she was struck, if you could um, show us on the diagram? She was on West Main Street, just west of Northwest Barstow Street. Okay. And, uh, if you could please um, show us more of the bottom of the map, Ms. Gussie. Hold on, before you move. Okay. Any requests to capture that annotation from the state or the defendant? No. Mr. Brooks? Yes, caption it. All right, we'll capture that. We'll be 1D. Actually, this isn't one, this is 15. Oh, sorry, 15D. <laughs> Eight. Yes, 15A. Thank you for that correction. Okay, now is it captured, Madam Clerk? I see it, yep. Okay. Should I clear it now? Please? Yes. <coughs> Okay, the next unit to have been struck by the defendant's vehicle was what? Uh, the Walks Yourself Band. And we see uh, the names of the individuals in the band that were injured by the SUV, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and that location you've uh, identified near the subway and <clears throat> another business known as the Vino Gelato. Correct. Okay. What was the next? Uh, well, I guess the next unit or individuals to be struck were spectators. Is that correct? That is correct. It'd be Charles Green and Lily Green. And they were near the Martha, Martha Merrill Bookstore, correct? They were on Main Street, just west of Gasper Street, okay. sitting on a little bump out from the curb. Okay. And they were spectators? Yes. Okay. The next group to uh, have been struck? Uh, it would be, uh, the group is Bears Logistics Group. Okay. And what were they, what uh, business were they to uh, have been struck? Uh, it would be, uh, the group is Bears Logistics Group. Okay. And what were they, what uh, business were they struck nearby? They were by Vasco Social Club. Okay. <laughs> Now we need to go to the top of the map again, please. The next unit that was struck by the defendant's SUV? It'd be the Waukesha Blazers Baseball Club. And how many individuals with the Blazers were impacted by the SUV? Five directly. And their names are listed there on, on Exhibit 15? Yes, they are. And Jackson Sparks' name is highlighted in red, why? 
Uh, he's one of the six deceased people from this incident. Okay. The next unit to be impacted? That would be the extreme dance team. And uh, the names associated with that team are listed on Exhibit 15? Yes, they are. And uh, what was the general area and the street where they were impacted? What business? Uh, they were right in front of Mama Ducky's Bakery, um, or Chef Pam. Okay. It's right before the Five Points in Waukesha, which is an area where Broadway and Main Street cross. Okay. Can you zoom back into the Five Point area, please? And were there any spectators injured in that exact area? Yes, there were. And who was that, please? Isaac Foglia and Deborah Ramirez. Okay. And then uh, getting through the five points, what was the next group impacted? It would be Citizens Bank. Okay. And that was Jane Kulik? Correct. And she was fatally injured? Yes. Okay. The next group? Or I, I guess the next group is actually spectators. Correct. There okay. was three children that were uh, sitting on the north side of the roadway on the corner of Clinton Street and West Main, and they were struck by the vehicle when it came through. What business is located right there? Uh, the Steaming Cup is on the northwest corner of that intersection, so they were very close to that. Okay. The next unit that was impacted? Uh, that would be the Dancing Crannies. And that was just past Clinton Street, sir? Correct, just west of Clinton on West Main Street. Okay. And you've listed the names of the persons that were injured by the defendant's vehicle associated with the dancing grannies, correct? The injured and the deceased. Okay. And again, you've designated the deceased with red, uh, color red? Yes. And the others were just injured? Correct. Okay. And that was uh, near... Uh, Couple businesses that you noted on the map, sir? Uh, that, that took up a very large um, part of the roadway that was very spread out, but uh, Donnie Boy's Tap, Curry Insurance, um, those are the two most common uh, businesses in that area. Okay. And if we could move on to the uh, last group. Sorry. What was the last group to be impacted by the defendant's vehicle? Uh, the Catholic Communities of Waukesha. And have you listed there the names of all the individuals who were injured by the defendant's vehicle uh, related to the Catholic Communities of Waukesha? Yes, I have. Overruled. I don't identify or consent to being called the defendant. Your objections noted. <laughs> and is there a business or uh, entity nearby that uh, in the area where the Catholic community was struck? Uh, the closest place would be uh, Planned Parenthood. Okay. All right, thank you. We can take down Exhibit 15, and I, next I'm gonna ask you to please pull up number 12. While she's doing that, Detective, I'll ask you a pretty basic question. All of the uh, locations that you've described for us so far, are they all located in the same footage being captured of the parade route the next day after uh, the parade? Yes, I am. Who captured that footage? Uh, Specialist Andy Schmidt. Works for your department, sir? Yes, he does in the evidence department. Okay. And uh, was the drone able to travel the length of the parade route? Uh, this captures uh, from the area where the people started being injured. We didn't capture the entire route. Okay. And uh, to your knowledge, sir, you, you've seen this video before, correct? Yes, I have. Is it a true and accurate depiction of the, uh, the way Main Street looked on the morning of November 22, 2021 at about 9.56 a.m.? Yes, it is. By now, all of the injured have been... Uh, removed from the scene, obviously. Injured and deceased. Okay, but there's still objects in the roadway? Correct. And uh, investigators and other people can be seen in the, in the uh, drone footage? Yes. Okay. Uh, move to admit number 12 and permission to publish, please. 
Any position by you, Mr. Brooks? Objection. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 12 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Okay, so again, we're going to start playing this, and I will ask Ms. Gussie to pause at various occasions so you can describe what we're seeing, but if you can just give us a general idea where we are right now, please. So right now the drone would be city, sitting on um, pretty low to the ground on West Main Street, um, just west of Northwest Barstow. And which direction is it facing? It would be facing west, okay. the direction of the, the parade took. Okay. And uh, can you see or identify the business on the right-hand side? Uh, that would be Smart Asset Realty. Okay. And can you tell us, I don't know if you could tell, what's on the left-hand side. Can you identify anything? Uh, just right a little now? bit further up is uh, Subway uh, Sandwich Shop, and I know that the Vino Gelato is right next door to that. Okay, that's kind of right about the roof of that vehicle that's parked there on the left, right? I see Subway sign? Correct. Okay. All right, please play. And can you pause it here, please, at the 23 second mark? Uh, was anybody struck in this area, sir? Yes, this would be the area that Nicole White was struck. With the Remax balloon? Correct. Okay. And now we got a better shot of the subway there on the left? Correct. Okay. And on the right, past Asset Realty, there seems to be a tall building with some mirrored windows on the right. Do you see that? Correct. That should be 220 West Main Street. And what's located there, sir? Uh, it's an apartment build. And it's an apartment building, um, five levels, and we captured some video that was uh, recorded on the top floor of that building. Okay. All right, play. And we'll pause it at the 35 second mark. Was anybody struck in this area, sir? Uh, this would be the area of the Waukesha South Band. Okay. Play. We'll pause it there. At the 59 second mark, what do we see here, sir? The businesses, identify please. Oh, there's a chocolate shop on the left, and then uh, the vino and gelato is just on your left, and the front building on your left with the black roof is Martha Merrill's bookstore. Okay. Was anybody struck in this area? Oh, uh, this would be the area that Barris Logistics was at. Okay. Play. I'm going to talk, but you could keep it plain. It's at the 117 mark. What's that cross street here? Uh, this would be Gasper Street. Okay.
in that area there is where there were some spectators that were hit. Okay, thank you. Now we've just crossed Gasper? Correct. Okay. And keep it plain, please, at the 157 mark. What businesses are we seeing here? Uh, the joke shop is on your left, and the Waukesha Theater is on your right. That's the area that the Waukesha Blazers were in when they were hit. Okay. And now we're approaching the five points area, sir? Correct. All right, was any group injured in this area? This is where the Extreme Dance Club was when they were impacted. Okay. We said that that was at 234. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, at the 240 mark here, what's this business on the right? Objection. Um, just for the record, who are the people off to the right? You can question the witness during cross-examination, okay? On the right, there's Mama Duckies and Chef Pam's Kitchen. Okay. And this is where we get that weird cross streets. That's why it's called Five Points, right? Correct. And that's why everybody gets lost in downtown Waukesha, <laughs> right? Yes. Okay. All right, now we've gotten through the five points. And what business is on the right, sir? We're at the 319 mark. Uh, there's a Irish restaurant on the right, and then coming up, up ahead is a steaming cup. That's right on the corner, on the right corner. And then on the left corner would be People's Park, which is a restaurant. And that's the Clark Hotel on the right? Correct. Okay. Uh, we'll pause it here at the 351 mark. Do you see uh, a vehicle in the picture at this point, sir? Yes, I do. Do you know what unit that vehicle is associated with? That's a support vehicle for Citizens Bank. Is this the area where Jane Kulik was struck and killed? Yes, just up in front of the vehicle on the right-hand side, there's two green hash marks that would uh, be the location that she was found at. Okay. Play, please. And you already mentioned that's the steaming cup on the right, correct? Correct. And uh, the uh, there were some kids hurt on the corner there? Yes, on this corner where the blankets were, there was three kids that were sitting there that were impacted. Okay. Now at this point it's about 417 and the drone's going to focus in on some skid marks on the roadway, is that right? That is correct. After further investigation, did these skid marks have any relevance to this investigation, sir? We believe they have no relevance to this investigation at all. But at the time we weren't sure, correct? Correct.
All right, now we're uh, through that intersection. Did anything of significance occur in this area, sir? We're at the 517 mark of the video. Yes, this is where the Dancing Grannies were, Dancing Grannies support vehicle. Okay. And then directly on the right in front of that is Donnie Boys, which okay. is a bar. And then up a little bit further on your left-hand side is Curry Insurance. Okay, and we see Magellan's on the right with the big M? Correct. Okay. And you said this is the area where the dancing grannies were impacted. Yes. Are you able to tell uh, from this drone the area where the uh, position of three of the deceased victims from the dancing grannies were located? Yes, As I we go further. Yes, I can. Okay, I'm just I'm asking the foundational question. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and play, please. Pause. Uh, that's the 532 mark. Can you identify for us what we see here, please? On the left-hand side, there's a pavement marking with green paint, and there's some um, towels that were used um, for giving medical aid and a lot of blood on the ground. Do you know who was found at this location, sir? Yes, I do. Who was that? Uh, Tamara Durand. She's a deceased victim from the grannies? Yes, she is. Okay. How about on the left-hand side of the video, there's a building that I can read says Karate Studios. Do you see that, sir? Yes, ma'am. Was another victim of the dancing grannies found in that location? Yes, there was. And who was found in that uh, position, sir? Leanna Owens. Okay. Please keep playing the video. That's Curry Insurance on the left. I can see the sign. Correct. Okay. And coming up will be the uh, third uh, position for uh, one of the dancing grannies who suffered fatal injuries as a result of this incident, sir? Yes. Right there? Correct. Who was found in that location? Virginia Sorensen. Okay. Continue playing. What's the side street we're passing here? Uh, Maple Avenue. Okay. And what are we approaching here in this area, sir? We're coming up to the area where the Catholic Charities um, were impacted, and on the right, there's a building with, um, it's a one-story building with a black roof that goes around. That would be Planned Parenthood of Waukesha, or okay. of Wisconsin. And now we're getting towards the end of Main Street here where it turns to Wisconsin Avenue. That's and now we're getting towards the end of Main Street here where it turns to Wisconsin Avenue. That's correct. Okay. There's a natural bend in the road to the left, right? That is correct. Dog leg left. Now we are past the, past the point where anybody is further struck by the vehicle, correct? 
That's correct. No, nobody was injured in this location. No, they were not. But we're approaching, if the uh, video will go, we're approaching Veterans Park. Correct, Veterans Park is directly in front. If you were not to not turn on the roadway, you would run into Veterans Park. Right where that big tree is in the middle of the stream. Yes. All right, I'm impatient, so I'm gonna have, <laughs> have you describe for us as we turn the bend, uh, what's the significance of this area, sir? So in this uh, area, when the vehicle that was hitting and killing all these people came up to the bend in the road, it turned to the left and Officer Schulten was standing there and he made the decision to use deadly force to attempt to stop the vehicle. Okay. And that's this intersection here that we're seeing where the two squad cars are parked? Yes, it is. This is the area where Officer Scolton was standing when he fired at the defendant's vehicle? Yes, it is. All right. We can go ahead and stop it at the 801 mark, please. Thank you. Oh, wait, before you turn it off, it's kind of hard to see, and nobody probably will be able to read it, but maybe you, if you look real close in the upper left-hand corner, there's a date and time stamp on the, on the drone video. Do you see that, sir? Yes, I do. Could you please read that? It says 2021-11-22, and then it says 10 colon 06, and I can't read the smaller numbers. So to me, that'd mean it was November 22nd, 2021 at 10 06. That's the time this recording was made, correct? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. In the upper will we be turning to a new topic? Yeah, actually, I don't have too much more with Detective Casey. I could probably finish my direct in about the next 10 or 15 minutes, Your Honor. I'll let you finish the direct and we'll reserve cross for Monday morning. Thank you. Go ahead. Sir, I want to show you another item that's been marked as exhibit. <coughs> Exhibit 141. May I approach a witness, Your Honor? You may. I'm joking, Your Honor. I thought I was approaching a witness. I'll make a few exceptions to that, sir. Will I be awarded this sign? Mr. Brooks, we'll take that up later. Sir, can you please identify number 141? This is a list of everyone that is named victim in this case, um, which count it refers to, and the group that they are associated with. Is that uh, a summary of the testimony that you just uh, provided, sir? First, are we still looking at the video? No, we can turn that off. Thank you. So your objection is to that is granted. Do you have an objection to the question that was asked? <coughs> okay, keep going. Yes, it is. Okay. And that's a document we created uh, for use at this trial. Is that right, sir? Yes. Keep track of everybody. Correct. And the count, keep the counts all straight. Okay. There's a lot of information to keep track of. Okay. Um, move for admission of 141 and, yep, 141. I'm not going to publish that, Your Honor. Just want it in the record. Mr. Brooks, any position on that? Yeah, I'm um, Is that a document? Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled, and the court will receive it. Will I be able to view it? 
A copy will be provided to you if it's not within the materials previously. Now, Detective Casey, I would like to return back to your post on White Rock Avenue um, and Main Street on November 21 of 2021. And do you remember something happening around 4.35 p.m. that afternoon, sir? Yes, I do. What do you remember? Uh, you know, it was a normal day. It was windy out. It was cold. Uh, a little bit after 4 p.m. I heard on channel one, which is a primary channel that um, <coughs> our road squads use. Um, squads being, dis first I heard a reserve officer call out that he's out with two people and they reported that there was a fight down by the um, boat lodge. Okay, did that draw your attention for any reason? Uh, it was just a little bit north of my location and I just wanted to make sure that I was aware in case somebody came in my direction. Okay. But you didn't leave your post. I did not. Okay. What do you remember happening next, sir? Uh, they dispatched um, a number of squads there to uh, attempt to locate um, this incident. What did you do? You know, I, I uh, started just paying a little bit more attention. I stood up, I started looking in that direction just to try to be aware in case somebody came my way. Okay. Um. <clears throat> At some point, did you hear a radio transmission from Sergeant Warner? I, I am aware of the transmission, but I did not hear it that day. Okay. Um, how did you become alerted to a problem? Uh, it was about 4.37 p.m. I was standing up. I was sort of in the diagonal part of the intersection, and I heard a horn blaring beep, 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 and that sort of like alerted me, trying to figure out what was going on on White Rock in the staging area. So I started to look up that way. Okay, what did you see? At first I didn't see anything. And then a few seconds later, I saw the people in the staging area start to spread apart. And within seconds, a red Ford Escape appeared to come through uh, where the staging area was. You saw this with your own eyes? Yes, I did. And did you see where the red Ford Escape went? Yes, I did. Where did it go? Well, first it was coming down southbound. There was a vehicle that was stopped at the intersection in the lane that was supposed to turn to the left that was part of the parade. This vehicle went around that car and then made a left hand, started to make a left hand turn. Okay. What action, if any, did you take? You know, as soon as I heard the car beeping and I was alerted, I started to head towards the center of the intersection. Um, as the vehicle continued at me, I went to get in. I ran to get in front of the vehicle to try to get it to stop. What was going through your mind at this point? Um, I thought it was just a lost motorist, somebody that from the apartment building that uh, wanted to get in their parking spot. You know, it, it doesn't happen often, but sometimes there's people that come through. Um, they they're impatient. They what's going on? It's like it's a parade. And um, we have to tell them, hey, you can't be on the road right now. They always stop. It's okay. So you, th you thought there was some innocent explanation at this point? Cor correct. I thought I would get out in front of the car and he would just stop. We'd have a conversation and we'd safely get him off the parade route. Okay. How did you try and stop the car, the, the uh, Ford Escape? Well, at, at first I was a little surprised that the vehicle kept coming at me because I'm in full police uniform. I'm standing in front of it and it started closing the distance pretty fast. So um, as the vehicle approached me, I started pounding on the hood. Um, so and you were close enough to pound on the hood of the car? Yes, I was in the roadway and his, the distance closed really fast. Okay, how fast was the car traveling, would you say? It could be three to five miles an hour, but in that area with all the people around and a, a vehicle that weighs 2,000 pounds against a person, I mean, it came upon me very fast and was very threatening. Sure, but I mean, by the speedometer, it's not moving very fast, correct? Correct. At what? this stage? Correct. Okay, so you pound on the hood. Correct. Do you say anything? I'm yelling stop and pounding on the hood and trying to get the person's attention so they can stop. What happened? The vehicle kept, continued going. It like pushed right through me. Were you struck by the car? Yes. How? 
I brought the vehicle, contacted my body, and as it continued, I pushed down the left front of the vehicle. Okay. And um, were you injured? No. Okay. Did you see the driver of the car as it raced past you? Yes, I did. Did you get a good look? An excellent look. Who was driving that car, sir? Daryl Brooks, the defendant. You're 100% sure of that? 1,000. Was there anybody else in the car, sir? Not that I saw. I'd like to show you an item that's been marked as exhibit number eight, please. Tell me when it's up, please. Okay. Can I have that number again? Yes, eight. Thank you. It is up. What do you uh, see on the screen, sir? So this is a, a camera from Randy's Imports, which would be on the southwest corner where I was located at. There's a number of cars in the parking lot, and on the north side, you can see West Main Street, and there's a number of people that are on the sides of the roads that were spectators in the parade, and then there's people that were actually marching in the parade that you can see they have uh, red uh, shirts on. You've seen this video clip before, sir? Yes, I have. Do you believe it's a true and accurate representation of the events uh, of November 21, 2021? Absolutely. And this clip is about 28 seconds long, is that right? Yes. Uh, move to admit and permission to publish number eight. Mr. Brooks, any position on that? Uh, is that an objection? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Your objection is noted, it's overruled. Uh, exhibit eight is received, permission to publish is granted. Okay, please orient, orientate us. Um, so we are, this is the south right here. This would be looking to the north and White Rock Avenue is in this area here. This here is Main Street. Okay. On the, up right near, uh, that arrow that you drew near the top of the screen, it looks like there's a very bright light at the top of the screen. Do you see that? Uh, the street lights? No. Or to the right? Um, to the, yep, right there. What's up in that area, sir? That would be the squad cars that I had with me. Okay, you have the red and blues on? Correct, on both vehicles. Okay, and that's what that light is in that area? Yes. Now you, Scribbled all over this, but <laughs> can, can you see yourself? Uh, not right now. Not right now. Where, where do you remember standing? So if the squad cars were by this circle right here, yep. I would have been like right in this area to the left. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to play this, but I'm going to ask Miss Gussie to put it in full screen because I'm not going to be pausing it or stopping it. I want to make sure we capture the whole top and bottom of this one. Okay. We'll clear the annotation since this is a video. So I'm going to play it through once and we're just going to watch it and then I'll ask you what we saw and we can go back if we need to. Play. Do you want me to talk while it's going on or after? No, because I can't see the counter, so. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do that one again with the counter up so I can pause it and have you point out. It's okay. really hard to see what the heck we're supposed to be looking at on this one, isn't it? <laughs> yes. All right, so here we are, we're paused at, whoop, you're gonna start, okay. That's okay. 
So right by the flashing lights on the left hand side, you'll suddenly see me come out with the uh, orange vest on. Pause, please. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Detective. Okay, we're pausing at the eight second mark. Um, show us circle where the jury's supposed to be looking right now. And what are we gonna see up there? You should see me walk from the right hand side to the left hand side, uh, slow speed at first and then speeding up towards the end. You are, in other words, you picked up the pace. Correct, and then shortly after you will see the Red Ford Escape come down the street here and traverse westbound on Main Street. Okay, now is this video good enough to see you actually pounding on the hood? <laughs> Unfortunately, this black pickup truck is uh, blocking where that happened at. If that pickup truck wasn't there, you would be able to see it. Okay. And just to remind us, you're in a uh, bright fluorescent yellow um, safety vest, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, play, please. Right there, is that you? Yeah, that is me. Okay, 12 seconds. Circle yourself, please. We're paused at 12 seconds. Okay. Okay, go ahead and play, please. There's the red SUV. Correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's it for Exhibit 8. I'm going to ask Ms. Gussie to pull up Exhibit 120. <coughs> The photo is up. Okay. Have you seen this photograph before, sir? Yes, I have. This is State's Exhibit 120. Um, do you believe this photograph is a true and accurate representation of the events of November 21, 2021? Yes, I do. You've seen this photograph before, sir? Yes, I have. Okay. Just tell the jury what it's a picture of. It's a picture of the Ford Escape that was involved in this incident and Daryl Brooks, the defendant, Driving the vehicle. Okay. Uh, move to admit 120 and permission to publish. Uh, Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 120 is received. Permission to publish is granted. I don't consent to being called that name or defendant. Your objection is noted. Objection for his and his widow. Overruled. <laughs> okay, detective, please uh, help the jury see what we're supposed to see. Where is the red SUV? Dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like a person that's involved in the band. <clears throat> One of the band people are to your right in the center. And then right in the middle of the screen, you see a red vehicle. And then seated, seated at the driver's seat is a gentleman with a white hoodie on. And uh, <clears throat> appears to be black facial hair, is that correct? Correct. Is that what Daryl Brooks looked like as he drove past you just a block or two earlier? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name. I do not know anyone by that name, nor do I agree to being called that name. And it's hearsay. It's not hearsay. Your objection's overruled. You may answer, Detective. Yes, that's the defendant, Daryl Brooks, the person that drove past me and didn't tr stop when I tried to stop the vehicle. Is that how he looked as he drove past you? Yes, it is. With the hood up? To be honest with you, I don't remember the hood up when he went past me. It happened very fast. I could only see the outline of his face. <clears throat> I know some people later on say that they saw him with hair. When I saw the pictures with his hoodie up, it explained to me why I did not see his hair. Okay. All right. Just let me uh, consult here one second. I think I'm done for right now, Your Honor.
I don't have any other questions for this witness at this time, Your Honor. Right, Mr. Brooks, I will give you an opportunity to cross-examine, but that will be Monday morning since it is 441. Now 442. We've had a long week for the jurors and a couple of long nights, so I'm going to break now. Um, I do need to read through an instruction. He may step down. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -to -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic devices such as a mobile phone or computer text or instant messaging or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. If you come in contact with the parties, lawyers, interpreters, or witnesses, do not speak with them. For their part, the parties, lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene, either in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other electronic app application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in this case. Any information you obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this inf information is unfair because the parties would not have the opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device, including personal wearable electronics applications or tools with communication capabilities to share any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter, either in person, electronically, or by any other means. If anyone does so despite your telling them not to, you should report that to me. I appreciate that it is tempting when you go home in the evening to discuss this case with another member of your household, but you may not do so. This case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in this courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence, and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After the trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout the trial. If any juror has any reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. With that, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are excused for the weekend. We'll see you Monday morning. All right, for the jury, please.
record to reflect that the state has provided to the clerk uh, exhibit 120. Uh, the, no, sorry, 141. I'm going to look back a page. 141. Uh, that's the summary exhibit that the court admitted pursuant to uh, section 910.06 of the Wisconsin statutes. Um, a copy of that exhibit will be provided to Mr. Brooks right now, and that's being handed to him by Deputy District Attorney Leslie Basie. All right, anything else we need to address before we conclude for the weekend from the state? The state is excusing from its subpoenas uh, with the court's permission, please. Officer Phillips, Kyle Edwards, and Holly Berg. Have you received any of the subpoena forms from Mr. Brooks related to any of these witnesses to assist with? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I apologize because I was speaking with Ms. Daisy. So she also reminded me that you were going to rule later as to Detective Guth and Erica Patterson. So we, are, we do not intend to recall these individuals. We would seek to release them from our subpoenas if they are on Mr. Brooks' witness list, which he has due on Monday, and he wants them subpoenaed. We would make arrangements to have them return. I guess the question is the exclusion order. Maybe we should wait to see his witness list on Monday. Let's wait to see the witness list on Monday, please. That's your due date. Um, so I expect that will be filed. Um, and then I can take up the issue of releasing individuals from their subpoenas from the district attorney's office. And then, of course, I'll take up Monday morning the issue with Exhibit 6. Yes. Uh, all right, Mr. Brooks, anything from you at this time? Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm definitely going to have uh, the subpoenas. Like I said, I would need to, I guess, confer with how to properly get them done and filed in the right fashion. Mr. Brooks, I per I've advised you previously. I, I would be willing to review for completeness. You need to get those to me in a timely fashion. Your witness list is due Monday. And so I expect those subpoenas to be uh, brought with you first thing Monday morning so I can address with you and the state how any of those witnesses who are, who are also listed on the state's witness list, uh, we can address the logistics of that. If they're not on the state's witness list, um, that's a different situation, but the state has offered for any witnesses and the state can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding you have offered for witnesses that are on the state's witness list um, that if Mr. Brooks names them, um, and absent, I guess, any objection by you for some lawful reason, you would assist in getting those subpoenas to those individuals. Yes, and he wouldn't necessarily be limited to our list. We've offered, in right. addition to that, if they are relevant witnesses and they're, it's reasonable to get them served, that is the southeastern Wisconsin area, we will assist in that, Your All Honor. Right, thank you. That, uh, you brought that to my attention, and I didn't re quite remember that. So get all your subpoenas together, get your witness list, and the state's offered um, some assistance in doing that. Um, I do want to state that I previously touched on that whole topic that that was one of my concerns when I was compiling my witness list was, was I going to be calling anybody that they already had on their, on their list? If you, if you recall, I stated that for the record. That was... You mean witnesses they actually call or just witnesses who are on the list? Both. Well, if you want to question a witness and the witness is called by the state, that will be your opportunity uh, to do that um, generally. That's how it's done. If you are 
asking to then have them recall during your case in chief we can take that up at a later point in time but you got to have the subpoenas available okay yeah i, I, I follow that i was wanted it stated for the record that i had raised that issue because at that time i still hadn't even gone through the entire witness list from the prosecution it's 30 plus pages that's a lot of names I so agree, it was, Mr. It was Brooks. There's a lot of names, but I actually extended the filing deadlines. They all have come and passed, but I obviously, in light of you representing yourself, I extended that um, gave, and have ordered that you file your witness list by Monday. So that's how we will address that. Do you have any other issues at this time? Yes, I do. Uh the statement of particulars that hasn't been responded to by affidavit. The notice of special appearance hasn't been responded to. I direct to. your attention to the Barnaby decision, sir. The court's not going to be addressing that topic any further. So what about the subject matter jurisdiction? Sir, that's an argument that has been debunked repeatedly by the courts in the United States of America all over the place. It is not recognized as any type of issue that a court needs to address. It is summarily denied. Can Next you show topic. proof that it has no relevancy, Your Honor? I direct you to the Barnaby decision, sir. All right. Can you show proof of that, I'm sorry? Your Honor? Verify? Give them what? Can you show a verified affidavit of that? No. All right. Um, Mr. Brooks, the hearing today is concluded. We'll see everyone back here on so you, you Monday at 8.30 a.m. We are in recess. Of course, stepping off the bench. That is